Hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Glad to have you here today. Well, we're starting a couple minutes early. Sorry. I, my watch, I thought my watch said it was like 2.59, but I'm a couple minutes early. We'll vamp. I'll dance. Put my Eclipse glasses on, courtesy of Elise. Hey, Candy Thunder says, I've never looked hotter. I feel like Jordy from uh, Star Trek. The next generation. I would be responding to chat right now, except for I can see nothing. Literally nothing. Hello, everybody. It's good to see you. Now, the discussion today, do you use your blinker? <laughs> uh, Denise, only when there's blinker fluid. Ellen, you should always use your blinker. Five exclamation points. You should talk to your buddy, uh, Tony Spark, about that. You should talk to your, your buddy, Tony Spark. I don't know how much of it we're getting, but... <laughs> Erica Eternal always, always uses the blinker. Did you put a poll up? Okay. There's a poll now. Candy Thunder has started a poll. I, I don't know that I can see it. Blinker always. Blinker always. Most of the time. Hey, Fane, Beth Bars, Jackie Kelly, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Erica Eternal, see you there as well. Luna Rose, Donna, Amber. Karsti T, La Book Dragon, Erica Eternal, Amarella Hickey, Rebecca, thank you guys so much, Andromeda Amber, Sally, Thane, Beth Bars, see you there as well, thanks so much, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Hey, Mad Hatter, somebody did, thank you so much. I don't know how I haven't seen them live yet, but thank you, thank you for the tool shirts, greatly appreciate it. Greatly, greatly, thanks so much, and Elise sent a whole set of the, uh, solar eclipse glasses for the team here. Heck yeah. Wait, Ashley says, nope, I'm Canadian. Do Canadians not use blinkers? Confused. Confused. The beard hair in my mouth. It happens. <laughs> Andy in Wonderland says I use my blinker so often that I sometimes use it to pull out of the driveway by mistake. I get it. I use it in a parking lot because uh, I'm used to using it. I've been given shit for using my blinker in a parking lot before. I'm like, what? An indicator. Yes. Yes. Blinker slash indicator. Turn signal. Whatever you, whatever you like to call it. Oh, Alan. Need a good distraction? Hey, we got you. We got you, boo-boo. Ah, Animal with the perfect beats. That's a cool one. Thanks so much for that. Becky Morlock, Pink Rain, uh, Piezo24, Fang, Jelly5, Chris, Donna, Matt Hatta, Denise. You guys are awesome. 420 friend, Janine, you are awesome. <laughs> yeah, has everybody changed their blinker fluid out this year? Friendly reminder to rehydrate your blinkers. Sunrise Bubbles, thanks for the share. Greatly appreciate that. <laughs> Sophia says, I flip people off who don't use their blinker. <laughs> this all started because uh, apparently Tony Spark doesn't use his all the time. <laughs> and uh, I walked in while this discussion was going on and I went and grabbed one of our DFHB rejected stickers and handed it to him. <laughs> Oi. Hey, Amber, every six months with my old change, blinker fluid. There you go. Oh, uh, Matt Hatter, your uh, your comment got covered up. I gotta go back and find it now. You said when you okay, when they were at aftershock fest, had to get you a shirt. Oh, that's awesome! Thank you so much. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Muffler belts and canooter valves. Yeah, good time to check those too, animal for sure, for sure, for sure. But now Tony's aware. He said. He ran to the uh, the post office after that discussion, and he's hyper aware of when he is and is not using it now. 
Jackie, no. We're just getting started. No stories yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Your mic isn't turned on. Okay. Hold on. Oh, now it's on. I, I had the channel disabled. Now he was over there on his soapbox and I didn't have the mic enabled. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, that's right. I just need to know if anybody likes the sound of a turn signal. Sound of a turn signal. I've been obsessed since I was You've been obsessed with the down drive, sound of a turn signal? Yeah, I just wanted to use it. You know what's funny is that now, uh, now it's all like fake sound like piped into the car. Because it's not, you know, it's not an actual bulb lighting. It's just the, the LED thing. So there's a lot of fake sounds pumped into cars now, even engine noises. It's like hybrid vehicles to make it, make it feel more real. H Bear, Dad said he doesn't use his blinker because it's a waste of light. <laughs> Goober yours clip clops like a horse. I hate you, 12. Thanks for the follow. Greatly appreciate it. Sarah Ann Wade, thanks for the share. Greatly appreciate that as well. Steph with the share. Thank you. Mrs. Alice says no. Tammy Lee, yes. Blue Barbie, thanks for the share. Greatly appreciate it. Miri with the follow. Sapphire with the share. Jers with the share. I hate you, 12 with a galaxy. Thank you so much for that. Justina, Candy Thunder, Steph Lingenfelter, A Flower, Jarby. 420 friend Mary Rose, Goober, Amanda, Elise. By the way, Elise, thank you so much for these. Greatly appreciate that. And, and yeah, we got uh, we got your book signed and sent back. And actually, swapped out your paperback for a hardcover. We upgraded you. Got you the free upgrade there. Becky, Pink Rain, Piezo, you guys are awesome. Carol Jaworski, Tammy Lee, Jarvie, Justina, Tonya Pimbleton. Thanks so much. Karen, Miles, Subeka, Fane, uh, Mary Soul, Sugar Skull, and Lady Artemis with the shares. All of you. Thank you so much. Darla, you as well. Thank you so much. Ah, Shane Riotta says, yes, but I noticed big lifted pickup trucks do not often use theirs. Well, that definitely describes Tony Spark to a T. I'm just kidding. He doesn't have a big lifted truck. Darla, Lady Artemis, Darla again with a share. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate it, guys. We have a goal of 3K bolts to get Candy Thunder up here. Who has her own AITA story? Are you going to be talking about that during your first appearance? Or is that later on? You can talk about it. She had she had her own uh, her own interaction. Mama Joe with lightning bolt tech. Yeah, I hate you. Twelve with the sail away. Goober with the lightning bolt. Thanks so much, Karen. Uh, Karen Shaper Cutter. Welcome to the Gosh Eckett Fam. Glad to have you here. V Baby, Tammy Lee, Goober, Charlie Diego, JP Kelsa, Tony Spark, Blue Barbie, Tanya Pimbleton, Carol Jaworski, Goober, JP, Candy Thunder, Jamie, Anna Hartman, Adventures with Pam K. It was fun to pop into your live the other day, by the way. It's Nisi. Fun to pop into your live, too. I've, I've popped into several people's lives over the past few days. Mama Gov with a share. Michelle Stevens with a follow. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate that. Oh, where's the likes bar? Dang it. Un momento, por favor. I'm on it. I'm sorry. Thank you for staying on top of it. There it is. We are 1%. We're moving. We're at 1%. We have a goal of 600K likes today, folks. Tap, 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 it, tap away. Make sure you're sharing for us. Thank you so much for that. Mama Joe, Erica, Eternal, Tammy Lee with the shares. Peanut as well. Erica, heck yeah. My Barker. Denise Buster. Sunaryenko. Mary, I hate you. 12. KTH93. Prep girl, by the way. Thanks so much for the new additions to the shelf here. Oh, you can see one. Let's see if I can get this guy moved over a little bit. There he is. There he is. Some new new additions there from Prep Girl. Uh, Dawn, no, we are just on TikTok right now. Crystal, Adventures with Pam, K. Jers, Kayla with the shares. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate that. All right, let's get rocking and rolling, shall we? We're at 1,200 of 3K on our likes goal to get Candy Thunder up here to tell us her story. It's a good one, too. Man, I can't wait for Candy Thunder. It is, it is an audacity kind of story. 
and audacity kind of store angels in chat now too. uh do but not not at long lights the sound grates on your nerves and you know i can imagine that sound would bug some people the sound of a blinker <clears throat> navy thunder likes it we we emulate it sometimes uh is m or emmy emmy thank you so much greatly appreciated v baby uh Oh, you missed everybody Sunday. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. Hopefully we can give you a distraction for a little while. And I'm sure it's going to be comical. Uh, we are continuing the week of my theme this week is everything is broken. Um, and that theme has very much continued. No, no tech gremlins yet. Knock on wood. But but that theme has very much continued. So my pissed off meter is at like 99 percent already. So uh, there's likely going to be some some entertaining reactions today. Some entertaining reactions. Sad Oak, thank you so much. This is a Rode NT1A, uh, and I actually have it running through a Zoom L8 soundboard. But what makes it sound better is I have some mastering effects that I send it through live in Adobe Audition before it gets sent to you. So how many hours am I on today, Becca? I'm on for two. On for two hours till 5 p.m. Central Daylight Time now. Uh, Emmy, Tanya Pimpleton, Denise, Anise. Lisi Lex, Emmy again there, Lorinda. Poll ended. Let's see it. Let's see the poll. Wow. <laughs> I never I never even saw the question or the or the answers. Do you use your blinker? Option A, yes, of course. 35 votes. Option B, no, I'm an a-hole. One vote. <laughs> and it wasn't Tony Spark. It's somebody else. Oh, man, uh, that is fantastic. Thank you guys for playing along with us. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Please don't start smearing poo on the walls, CC. They could get there. Yeah, I mean, you never you never know. Hey, Adrian Pumu plays. Lisey Lex Tanya. Lisey Lex again there. Emmy, thank you guys so much for the love today. Greatly appreciate it. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you here. Coming up, we have stories about wedding day scandals, birthday dinner drama, terrible fathers, airports, drunkenness, wedding photo mishaps, secret family wealth, texting boundaries, and you know it, spicy stories and cake stories. Because it wouldn't be a Wednesday live on TikTok without spicy and cake stories. First goal, of course, is 3K bolts to get Candy Thunder up here. Who does happen to have her own AITA story for us? Uh, and it's a good one. So we're at 1952, a 3K on that right now. Bebop right along. We are recording a new episode of the Dusty Thunder podcast next week with special guest Tony Spock. And that's uh, that's always going to be a good time. We were supposed to do his not too long ago, but we ended up uh, doing that collab with Beyond Beautiful. And if you have not seen the podcast with Beyond Beautiful, it is on YouTube, Spotify, Apple podcast, all of those. So you can check it out there. That was a really good time. I'm sure we'll be doing more collabs in the future here. A um, couple of other notes before we get started. Of course, the Piano Man book is still for sale on Amazon or you can get signed copies in my TikTok shop. Um, including hardcovers, and we are working hard on getting the Audible audiobook finished so we can we can have that out there for you as well. It's all new recording. I'm not using any of the audio from the, the on-camera recordings I did before. This is all sound booth, higher quality stuff. So be sure to check that out. Fane, I did, I did hit record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We need a new Th Thunder and Spark podcast, Erica Eternal says. But... Says no one ever. <laughs> and, and it's sitting at seven episodes right now. And we joked that we would just leave it there. Yeah, just leave it at seven episodes. It's the Thunder and Spark seven forever. <laughs> Tiffany, a kiss. Uh, Paul, thank you so much. Burn. Uh, burn. So Mel Butler. Tiffany again there. Oh, Madam Maeve. I didn't see the Tiffany there before. Change your name. Donna. Tonya Bernso, thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it. Heather Carpenter, welcome to the gosh heck and fam. Heck yes. Uh, a couple other notes before we get started here. Um, um, oh, that's what it was. We are so close to 800,000 followers on TikTok and we have something exciting that's going to happen after that. But we need your help to get there. Help us help us get over the finish line just by by sharing the profile or the content with people who you think will dig it, who you haven't shared it with before. Uh, that's going to help push us past the finish line there. And we really want to get there because we're going to share something with you. Uh, a reminder, keep chat positive today and respectful. Everybody has their own opinion and we don't expect anybody to agree on anything, but it doesn't cost a damn thing to be respectful and to be a DFHB. That's a decent fucking human being. Also, don't spoil or you'll be muted. Don't do that. Get out your brooms. Members of the storm, 
Be sure to use those new emotes today, huh? Gordana, Jackie, Lorinda, Leanne, hey, 1973, Don Rosa, um, Arimilla. Is that right? Arimilia? Not Milia, Arimilla. Leanne, Sarah S. Officially, thank you guys so much. Leanne, see you there as well. They're the brooms. It's about to get dusty. Okay, here we go. Very first story of the day is from the AITAH subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for sleeping with my frenemy on my wedding day? I can't imagine how this would be okay ever. For reference, this happened about five years ago, but I was confronted about it recently. I'm a very boring person, and this was literally the only dramatic thing that has ever happened to me in my life. Six years ago, my fiance proposed to me. I was thrilled. We planned a beautiful, intimate wedding. I've always gotten along with his friends and family. His mother adores me. We've disagreed, but we don't but we didn't argue. We found ways to resolve our problems. Inside and out, we are a great couple. I never thought he would literally leave me at the altar. Our families, friends, and even the officiator kept trying to reassure me, but almost two hours after the ceremony was supposed to start, I got a call saying he got cold feet and didn't want to get married. Okay. Now it's starting to make a little more sense. He wanted to get more out of life before being tied down. <laughs> I'm feeling like my life is going to be over by marrying you, so I don't want my life to be over yet. If that's the viewpoint you have on marriage in general or your partner, yeah, it's probably best not to get married. I did some things I'm not proud of. I begged my mom to get me out of the dress and I tore the stupid thing. I left the wedding after everyone kept looking at me with pitying eyes. I fended off a lot of calls from friends and family telling them I was fine and I didn't want to talk. Here's the thing I was called an asshole for. I have a friend of me. We've known each other since middle school. He's always been a class clown bully. I was not attractive growing up and he would jokingly flirt with me and try to annoy me as much as possible. He never really grew out of either of those things. So when he called to check up on me or really to rub it in my face that I was dating a loser who dumped me on my wedding day, he asked if I wanted to hook up with him. I said yes, because my life was ruined anyway. What could be worse? He picked me up and we slept together. This dude, that, that, Pickup line actually worked. I don't know how, but it worked. He is the second person I have ever been with, the first being my fiance. It wasn't religious. I just saw it as, as special that we were each other's first and only. My fiance evidently didn't feel the same. I blocked my fiance, as, as did the rest of my family. His mom profusely apologized and said his late father would never have approved of what he did. My now ex fiance contacted me recently. He wanted closure, he said. What, this is five years after the fact? He apologized for ghosting me, but immediately said that it didn't justify me sleeping with someone else the night of our wedding. I told him it wasn't a healthy thing to do, but I've gotten comments from his friends that I acted badly, and they would have left me too. I don't even know what I did wrong. Am I the ass cannot? You don't do what? what? So now, wait, you don't get to leave somebody at the altar and then condemn their behavior for, for the partying that they did to cope with your assholery you don't get to, to leave somebody at the altar and then be like yeah you really shouldn't have did what you did when you were yeah after i did what i shouldn't have did you, know, you don't you're not in a position to judge anyone sir not at all also he waited five years to be like hey, i'm looking for some closure and i feel really bad about what i did but you should feel worse about what you did he didn't want closure he either just recently found out about it and decided he was going to call you just to, to rub salt into the wound or try to resurrect these feelings that you had on this day. You're not proud of it. But your relationship was over. Here's a quick poll. If somebody leaves their partner at the altar, is that relationship done? Or do the parameters of a normal relationship still apply? I don't think she cheated on her fiance when he left her at the altar. It was fucking over. All bets are off. He has no claim to say she can and can't do jack fucking shit at that point. He lost his ability to have input on her life, period. Now, obviously, she feels bad about it or she regrets it, not because she thinks that she she did something to harm their relationship. There was no relationship. It was over. Mm. Mm. 
So, OP, NTA. NTA, now your twat of, a, of an ex-fiance, I'm putting right here. Because not only did he do what he did, instead of thinking through, you know, he, he doesn't want to be tied down uh, and waited till you were actually standing at the altar to make this decision, which is a dick move, 100%. Him calling you five years later to be like, yeah, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> okay. Okay, buddy. Okay. Okay. You get this for that. Not you. Not you, OP. Ex-fiance. Leave you at the altar, guy. Siani says he destroyed the relationship by leaving her at the altar. Defo. Faux show. Hey, Heidi, Matthew, Jill, Andy, Boo Boo, KTH93. Uh, Alicia, thank you so much. Bex, heck yes. In the gosh, I can fam. Glad to have you, Pink. Um, Alicia Reed with the Latin bolts there too. Tiffany Koyo Rakan in the gosh, I can fam. Glad to have you there. Jennifer Burns, uh, Burns, oh, heck yes. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. Uh, Jenny the Bomb Diggity, Heidi Harvey, Matthew Carroll. You guys are great. Jill, Mandy, thank you. They were on a break. It wasn't even a break. There was nothing to break. It was already broken. There was no, like, like, hey, let's take some time. I think when you leave somebody at the altar, there's no coming back from that. There's no coming back. There's no reconciliation. There's no closure. You just, you done did it. You did the damage. It's over. You've alienated or burned a whole bunch of bridges at once there, sir. And you've lost your ability to give anybody input on jack shit. Oof. Okay. We, we hit this goal. Let's get, uh, let's get Candy Thunder up here. Let me thank some gift is, and then we'll give, get Candy Thunder up here. I will need a save on numbers 15 and beyond. Mr. Tony Spark, Tanya Pimbleton in the number one spot here. Mama Joe, Lisey Lex, Madam Mave, TF90, Candy Thunder 1, Fame 13, Pale Ginger 1983, Anise Moon, V-Baby, Adventures with Pam, Sklingenfelter, Tony Spark, 94 Pickle, Alicia Reed. Thank you, sir. Greatly appreciate that. Jennifer Jago, KTH93, Melancholy, Katie, Erica Eternal, Donna, 12661, Mama Jams, Lady Stormfly, DB Cinder, Tammy Lee, Bailey Chapman, Josh and Gammy, Jelly55, Anna Hartman, RJHJ1, Brett Girl, Amber L. Hickey, Cole Barber, Koya Rakan, Violet Green, Lorinda, Denise Burkard, Justina, Kate Crush, and Jackie Kelly. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for helping us do that. We're going to get Candy Thunder up here and she'll be able to tell us her story here right quick. I'm going to get the next one set up. I feel like I'm talking really, really fast today. I don't know what that's about. The next one is going to get Tony Spark up here and a spicy reward story. Whoop. If I could type. Do you have time, Candy Thunder? Uh, I, I couldn't hear a word of that. But hold on just a second. You're going to tell us your story in a minute? Is that what you said? When you get back? Okay, we are on finger hearts now. And ladies and gentlemen, Candy Thunder is going to say hello real quick before she's got to jet out the door. Candy Thunder, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. Hi. In the center of the mat. Yes, sir. Right, right there. Step forward. You okay. know, in the center. There you are. Okay. There's the center of the mat. Okay, so you don't have time to tell us your story because you got to go. Pick up. Ava. Yeah, I gotta leave here in just like four minutes. Ava Thunder. Yes. But you can come say hi, and when she gets back, she'll tell us her story. Yes. We, or if we don't have time, I'll do. We'll do it on the VIP live. Yeah, that's what. Oh, what you did you you switched it back down? Why did you turn it? Uh, when it was flipped over upside down. Mm -hmm. Well, that works really well for a sound booth when there's no like environmental sound oh, or gotcha. the environmental sound is isolated. But here, it was just picking up. It would pick up the background chatter and every background noise. Ten. 10 times worse than it did before. Oh, and I was okay. losing my gosh hecked mind. Yes. So uh, I flipped it back. We, and Ava and I picked this out at Target. Um, and it's actually like embroidered on there. So it's not like, like plasticky print or anything. Yeah, it's a cool shirt. I know. I really like it. I thought the embroidered part was really fun. Like the old school Candyland game. So, and it was 20 bucks. So. Also, awesome. there's a song uh, called Electric Love. I forget who sings it. But it is like the Candy Thunder theme song. Why is that? Because it talks about candy. Oh, okay. And it's electric. It's like lightning. <laughs> you know, it's like lightning themed too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, well, hopefully we'll be able to get her back and uh, she'll be able to tell her story before we end the public live. That's okay. that is the goal. Worst case scenario, yeah. we'll still we'll still get to share it. But so uh, it's 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 not that it's OK. Before you bounce out, let me get yeah. your input on this real quick. On the blinker. Uh, always, yes. always use it. <laughs> always use your blinker. Uh, whenever uh, I'm gonna, you'll get your chance for a rebuttal. I'm going to do 30 seconds. When when we were younger, they're like the Happy Meal toys. Um, one of them was like the cricket from Mulan. I think it was Mulan. Um, but it made like it was supposed to make like a chirp sound, but it had a button on the bottom that made like a blinker sound when you mm. clicked it. So it was like click, click. Yes. Um, and we had my brother and I used that on like our bikes and the lawnmower. And that was our blinker to turn. So we're <laughs> clearly very big into blinkers in our family, I guess. I don't know. But I just thought it was really soothing, funny. clicky sounds. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why we did it, but we did it. Uh, also input on yes. uh, on everything is broken week. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not kidding. Everything we, is broken, right? <laughs> we have some wild family stories, uh, to tell, to tell everyone about, um, it's potty training and, and everything is broken week. So I cannot, I cannot wait to tell you guys about these stories and the VIP life. Cause life has been it, a mess. it is the funniest, like the funniest stuff ever. I don't know why it's, it's, it's funny now after yeah. the fact. No, I, I went from crying this morning to laughing hysterically, like just based on what happened. So, um, it'll be great. Yeah. But okay. Bye we'll guys. Get, we'll <laughs> I get run out the that door. momentarily. I yes. love you. <laughs> Drive safe. Should have used your blinker. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for getting her up here. Yes. She will get a chance to tell her story here in a little bit. Am I not housebroken? No, not yet. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, still still working on it by Borns. Yes, uh, Electric Love by Borns. It's a very good song. Somebody it's. Said they thought it was about a vibrator. <laughs> like I, I just saw it in chat. I don't think so. They said no, 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 no. I don't. I don't think it's about a. I don't think it's about a, a vibrator. I, yeah, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, Stephanie, thanks for the follow there. Uh, Gemma, thank you so much for the share. Greatly appreciate that. Becca, B-E-C-K-A. Member of the Gosh Hackett fam now. Heck yeah. Natalie Ford, da, 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 da. Uh, Alicia Reed, Heidi M, Old Girl Creations, Melissa B, Tanya Pimbleton, Janet, Little Gord, Koyo Rakan, Julie Crable, Janet S. Weaver, Mrs. Alice. Greatly appreciate that. We are at 920 at 2K on the Finger Hearts already. We are rocking and rolling right along. We'll dive into our second story here. But yeah, the, the last story was an NTA for UOP and uh, your ex-fiance is a huge douche canoe. I don't even know why you answered the call. No she's point in talking to that guy. Huh? She's not married. Do whoever you want to do. That's right. You do you. You do him. You do whoever you want. You're not married. He left you at the altar. All bets are off. If he liked it, then he should have put a ring on it. <laughs> I don't know the dance. I don't know. I think Tony Spark might know the dance. He could do it whenever he gets up here with us. Okay. Second story today is from... The AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Askinaut for Telling My Friend Not to Come If She's Bringing Her Kid? One of my nearly 30 friends put together a get-together at a restaurant for my birthday. Time out. Somebody who says nearly 30. is like not, uh, you know, a lot of people, 30 is like the people never want to say they're 30. They would, most people would be like 29. I'm 29, but this person is like nearly 30. So. I think it says something. The place has a bar where we're going to be hanging out. The plan was to get a bit tipsy and order appetizers. My husband and I have a three-year-old, but we're hiring a babysitter for the night. We rented out a private room with a bar. My other friend, Missy, has a five-year-old daughter. She mentioned she was going to bring her. I offered to pay my babysitter extra to watch her daughter. Missy said no, because her daughter is in daycare all day and she doesn't want her to have to... Uh, she doesn't want her to have to then be with a sitter. I said, I understand, but I don't think it's appropriate for her to come. One, I know our group. We're going to get rowdy and I don't want to censor myself. Two, Missy's daughter is like a lot of five-year-olds. She doesn't sit still, wants to run all over the place. Missy admits she doesn't bring her out to restaurants much because she doesn't know how to act. But I also know Missy and will just sort of let her as she's very permissive. Okay. I spoke to my friend who put it together and said, I don't want any kids there. There's a reason I got a sitter for my own kid. That friend agreed and told Missy not to bring her daughter. Missy has now thrown a fit and says she's not coming. 
I said, I completely understand. There are events I have missed because I don't want to leave my daughter and the group understands as we all have kids. I told Missy I'd be glad to have a play date or lunch another time with our kids so we can still hang out. I told Missy I can't stop her from coming to the restaurant, but we absolutely will not allow her to come into the private room. She's very hurt that we're excluding her. Am I the astronaut for not wanting a kid at my party and telling my friend she can't come if she brings her? Also, it's relevant. Missy didn't pay for the rented room. Two of my other friends did as a gift to me. So it's not as if I'm telling her she can't come to something she paid for. No, you are not the asshole for this. Also, your friend's response here, Missy's response of, of, I am so hurt. You all are excluding me. Also, I have no plans of telling my daughter to sit still. She's got the, I'll just take my ball and go home kind of mentality. So you kind of get where a lot of the five-year-old's behavior comes from, right? This is not you excluding anybody. This is you making a general rule. This is an adult party. There's not going to be anybody there to watch kids. So either Missy's going to come, she's going to do a good job of parenting her child, and she's going to be sitting there and be the only sober person amongst a group full of drunks, and nobody has fun being that person, or she doesn't come. Or she takes you up on your offer and lets your sitter watch her. I understand. So this is guilt. She's letting guilt drive the boat right now, and that, as a parent, I understand when that happens. You don't. She doesn't want to be away from her daughter, but... She can't do both things. She can't be like there having quality time with her daughter and having quality time with you and your friends at the party. She can't feasibly do both of those things anyway. So she'd be doing neither. It would be non-quality time that her daughter isn't gaining anything by by going to this party. She wouldn't be gaining anything by the quality time that she'd be having with her daughter or the time that she'd be having with you or your friends because one eye would be on her kid, maybe. She'd gain nothing by trying to do both. So it's either she chooses one or the other and you chose for her because she couldn't be adult enough to be like, yeah, I understand what you mean. Now, the, the one the one thing that I think might have been a bit unnecessary in here is when you said, I can't prevent you from coming to the restaurant, but I absolutely will not allow you in the room. That was a little a little harsh, unless that was a rebuttal to her saying, well, what if I just show up with my kid? If you, if she said some shit like that, yeah, absolutely. Somebody's going to be the appointed bouncer who's not going to let the kid, the kid in. <laughs> ah, but you. This is your party. It's a kid free party. That's the bottom line. She can she can be shitty about it all she wants. She can think that you were targeting her all she wants. And if that's how she wants to behave, you know, childish. And then she can just stay home and not have a choice to come. Or, you know, she could grow the fuck up and uh, and say, you know what? I understand. I get it. I'm not going to have a good time if I bring my kid there anyway. And everyone else is going to have less of a good time because they're going to be trying to help me keep an eye on my kid or being careful or whatever. And uh, and yeah, I should just let your sitter watch her. Thank you for that generous offer. Let's go party and have fun. But instead, she decided to drop trow and uh, take a big shit on everything. Because if she couldn't be there to ruin the party, by God, she was going to try to shit on it and ruin it beforehand. <sighs> one heck of a friend lee thanks for the follow rebecca 73 fane tammy lee v baby and haraxen jennifer jago ashley mims dean jennifer again there silver kim downer silver again rach with a hundo finger hearts heck yeah silver leaf photography s weaver letty foray leaf photography again there rach old girl creations alicia thank you guys so much united snorts of america thanks so much stacy ann janice you guys are great. Greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, Christina, thanks for the follow. Austin, thanks for the follow. Glad to have you here. We're at 80% already. 1781 a 2K to get Tony Spark up here. Heck yes. Ursula, thank you so much. The uh, the collab with Beyond Beautiful was a hell of a lot of fun. And I look forward to doing it again sometime. Very soon. Uh, and not a child-free free wedding breeze. This was a child-free birthday party. And one friend who had a kid wanted to bring her kid still. Even though OP offered to pay her sitter more to watch her child as well. Ellen's back. Hey, glad to have you. Bull Moose. Um, we've got Berrier's Bachelor with the follows. Thanks so much. Ashley G with the shares and the follows there too. Thanks so much. 
Uh, Diana, we are jumping into story number three here momentarily. Momentarily. Um, this, this Missy kind of seems like one of the people who, and I know you know who we're talking about. Um, there are people who will bring their kids to functions and immediately, as soon as they walk in the door, like check out as a parent and just assume that everybody else, the village is going to watch their kids for them. Don't be that person. Nobody wants to go to an event so that they can be the parents to your child. Like they may play with your kid. They may have fun with your kid. They may entertain them, but you're still the parent. You're still the one that has to be there to parent them. There are a lot of people who will just be like, ah, good. I like to go to things so I don't have to be a parent for a while. It's not how it works. And that's why you stop getting invited to things. Elfine in Australia. Good to see you. Uh, Ar- 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 Aramilla. Uh, we do the multi-stream on Sunday nights. That includes YouTube. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Uh, and also, we do TikTok only on Wednesdays. They wouldn't allow a kid in a bar anyway. So it's a restaurant that has a bar. And they booked a private room that has a bar in it. So, yeah. Maybe, maybe the restaurant would have a bouncer that they could have man that door. Matt Hatter, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will. I will dive into that uh, since we started posting, which, by the way, if you're not following our new Facebook page, go check out the Dusty Thunder show Facebook page. The link is also on my link tree, but we're now posting content on that page from the very beginning of when we started doing content back in August of 21, 22, August of 2022. We have like a thousand videos banked up. So we're starting at the very beginning on that Facebook page. You can go see some of the OG stuff before we had all the the setup here. I had a freaking whiteboard in the background. It was wild. Um, so we're, we're doing that. And, and since we started doing that, Facebook and Insta have just been flooded. The notifications are way more intense now. So it's harder for me to find things. But if you are on Facebook, go follow the Dusty Thunder Show and you'll see some you'll see some OG content. It's a hell of a good time. All right. You hit it. Let's get Tony Spark over here in just a moment. Lee Photography taking the number one spot here. The Mr. Beaumont. Animal 792. Overkill Mill. Alicia Reed. Mrs. Alice. United Snorts of America. S. Weaver. Anise Moon. And Harrison. Jennifer Jago. Sklingenfelter. Erica Eternal. Julie Crable. Katisi. Tammy Lee, Fane, Tonya Pimbleton. Tony Spark with the clutch save here on numbers 15 and beyond because TikTok Live Studios downloaded software platform is still checked. Good gravy. Mama Silver, Royally Nerdy, Michelle Bates, Letty Foray, uh, Salty Shell Back Creative, Cole Barber, V Baby, Mandy Chastain, Jilly 55, AK Mary, Rebecca Barrett. Uh, we've got Talex D. Donna12661, Justina, Josie's aunt, Denise Burkhard Berlioz. Uh, we've got Synth Underscore. Lorinda, this guy you know, old girl, Koya Rakan, Nat Ford, Maori Rocks. Uh, we've got Marielle's. Marielle's Green? That's a cool name. Pumu Plays. Uh, we've got. Is this Sarah? S A I R A? Syra? Bella? That's a cool name, too. Cheris Megan, Cassie Harrelson, and H. Molero. Thank you guys so much. We're going to get Tony Spark up here. Oh, we unlocked a spicy story, too. We did. We did. The spicy story. I've lost my mind, guys. I'm sorry. The uh, Everything is Broken Week has mentally destroyed me. My brain is cracked. Might get canceled today. Could happen. Um... I don't know if I have this one, Tony Spock. The cake gift. I don't know. If, I don't think they have that one anymore. Oh, oh, gotcha. Yep, 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 yep. They got rid of the cake. This one is going to unlock a cake reward story, and it is going to be six hundred donuts. We have a goal of 600 donuts that we're running at now. And we're at 25% of the likes goal already. Let's go ahead and get them up here, ladies and gents. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Tony, Tony Spock! Really? 97 point whatever percent of you people out 
there. Use your blinker all the time. You expect me to believe that? Listen, I am only here to defend my honor. I have been ridiculed, slandered, told that I'm disappointing. I was violently thrown a DFHB disapproved sticker at me today. Listen, I, I, okay. I am not saying that I don't always, that I don't always not use my blinker. I use the blinker. Okay. I use the blinker. Let me be clear. Sometimes I don't use the blinker because riddle me this. If I am in a designated turning lane and I am going to turn you red flagging me. He's red flagging me with lights. If I'm in a designated turning lane, I'm already turning. I know I'm turning. The person next to me in the turning, that's not in a turning lane knows I'm turning. The person across from me in the turning lane knows that I'm turning. Why do I need a blinker? Don't need it. I'm turning. I can't do anything but turn. So just saying. Well, I don't think you have to use a blinker in that case. That's what I'm saying. But, but no, you said that frequently <laughs> you don't use your blinker. Okay. All right. It happens every now and then. Sometimes I just forget the blinker. That's not my fault. That's not my fault. I'm focusing on the road. I'm not focusing on a blinker. Can't move your hand like two inches. Sometimes. You should be used to that. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jeez. Ah. Uh, I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm sorry. Of all you guys who oh, use, no. all Clearly you guys, you all you guys who use your blinkers, congratulations. Good job. You want this? There you go. If you use a blinker, congratulations. That's awesome. Sometimes you forget a blinker. I hope that none of you ever forget to use a blinker and ever don't use it. Please don't act like you've all used it. Not everybody's perfect. Need the bell. Shame, 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 shame. I'm not with you. Shame. It's okay. Shame. It's fine. Shame. It's fine. Shame. Ding, ding. I don't use it when I turn on my driveway unless I look. It happens. It happens. I guarantee you that every person in this chat has made a turn without your blinker before. Don't sit here on the high horse and tell me that you have, because I know you have. But it's fine. You want to use your blinkers all the time? Congratulations. You win the blinker award. <laughs> Those are wildly different things. <laughs> that's, like a, that's, a, that's a very, very different. That is wildly different. Oh, man. Anyway. <laughs> Apparently, this is me today. Apparently. I don't. It is what it is. We still love you, Tony. What kind of world would it be with you all obey the law? Exactly. Exactly. People, the whole law breaking and oh, it's against the law. But you never jaywalked. Bet you have. You always drive the speed limit. Bet you don't. Which is which is worse, driving over the speed limit or not using your blinker? Both are illegal, but I bet you do one or the other. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Any sport there? I drive the speed limit exactly. I'm just all saying. The time. Yeah, softly crocheted because I have been skewered today <laughs> by everyone in this office. This is an intervention. To everyone me. in this office has, yeah, has, has apparently I am a very not a DFHB. I don't know. All these people who are like, I always use my blinker. I bet some of you don't put your carts back. Ooh. To me, that's a worse Ooh. offense than the blinker. Driving under the speed limit, driving over the speed limit. Thank you. See? Yeah, it does. So for all of these wonderful thoughts and more, please don't forget to follow at Tony Spark <laughs> underscore. Because uh, we gained a lot, I gained a lot of followers last week. So if you don't follow me, you should, you should follow me. Because, you know, if you want to follow somebody who's a lawbreaker... If you like the law, I guess don't follow me, but I'm just saying, make sure you put your cards back. Use your blinker whenever you want to. Nobody's making you use it all the time. Yeah, people agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they don't, but Tony Spark. Follow Tony, Tony Spark underscore on TikTok. Bye. <laughs> Cue, the <laughs> Cue the outro music. Oh, man. Um Yes, this uh, <laughs> Candy Thunder said Ask on three. Uh, I'm there all the time. So welcome. Welcome to Ask on three, Tony Spark. <laughs> welcome. Glad to glad to have you here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that he uses it more than he thinks he does. 
It's just now he's hyper aware of when he's not using it. I'm sure. I'm sure of it. Okay, we did unlock a spicy reward story, so let's dive into that real quick. Tony the bad boy. He's the bad boy. He's the bad boy. 300 to 600 on the uh, on the donut goal, which is going to unlock a cake reward story. <laughs> Jessica, I didn't have to roast him like that. Uh, uh oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they all roasted me. They've roasted me all day ever since they found out this information. The looks of shame from this office towards me has just been it's, it's been unbelievable. It's it's all in good fun. We like to give each other a hard time. It, normally, it's you and Candy Thunder giving me shit all the time about something. You guys gang up on me all the time. So, so uh, excuse me for jumping on the opportunity. I had to, you know, not blink or I'd miss it. All right, 312 of 600. We're rocking and rolling there, and we're going to dive into the next story here. This is the spicy reward story from the Dusty Thunder subreddit. Heck yes. By the way, if you don't know about it, that is probably the central spot, the number one recommended point to submit your story for consideration for use in the show is to post it on the Dusty Thunder subreddit. Also, it'll get you immediate feedback from all the members there, and it is a growing community there that subreddit is pretty damn strong so if you have a story that you're thinking about posting post there first that is the way this is the way this story is am i the astronaut for wanting to expose my 24 female sister 26 female to her husband 26 male after she confessed to my husband 27 male on her wedding day you know what i like to do i'm gonna start reading these titles without all those details because they they do they do include them later on so let's try this again Nah, it's fine. It's fine. I cut it out whenever I create the title graphics for the video because it's just hard to read. But let's try it with that. Am I the astronaut for wanting to expose my sister to her husband after she confessed to my husband on her wedding day? See, it just sounds so much better. Sorry for the confusing title. I didn't know how to word it any other way. I, 24 female, have been married to my husband, 27 male, for about two years. My sister, 26 female, and her husband, 26 male, are high school sweethearts. My sister and I have always been close. Despite the... Despite, words are going to be hard today, folks, despite the small age gap, she acted like my second mother, so I never doubted her in anything. Let's call her Jane. My husband, let's call him Bob, and I met at uni. I was 23. I'm sorry. I was 20, and he was 23. He excelled in academics, sports, and looks, and was well-known around campus because of that, so obviously I had a crush on him. Jane also attended the same uni. Because I was new, she included me in her big circle of friends, and he was a part of that. I never made a move because I respected Jane and her friends. I didn't want to cause any trouble or make things awkward. She meant the world to me. Eventually, though, Bob and I became close friends. I grew to like him more. I also noticed that Jane rarely interacted with him, which was odd considering she was close to almost everyone. Sorry, which was odd considering she was close to almost everyone in her circle, but I never said anything. I did end up telling her that I liked him, though. She told me not to get my hopes up because he wasn't interested in any relationship. I was crushed, but tried to see him as a friend. He ended up confessing to me on my 21st birthday, and we began dating, which obviously resulted in marriage, and here we are now. During the entire time we were dating, Jane started to distance herself from me. We did have a talk about it when Bob and I first started dating, and I told her I'd break up with him if she wasn't comfortable with it, considering she's... He's her friend, but she rejected the idea. She hugged me and said she was happy for me, so I took her words for it. She still distanced herself, though. Her husband, boyfriend at the time, will call him Jim. He didn't attend uni, but his dad had a small construction business that he works for. Jim's a good man. He did everything for Jane, but due to our culture, women can't leave the house Women can't leave the family house until marriage, so Jane and I still lived with our parents then. So when Jim... So when Jim had saved up enough money to buy a house, he proposed to Jane and she said yes. Fast forward a year and Bob proposed. I said yes. Up until now, all Jane had done was distance herself from me. But when I sat my family down and told them the news, she cried. I thought she was crying from happiness until my mom told me I should have taken my sister's feelings into consideration before telling them. It was odd. It seemed like no one was happy. My mom took Jane to her room, but my dad stayed. He told me that Jane was having a hard time with Jim. I believed them. Since then, Jane distanced herself from Jane distanced herself more from me. When I tried speaking to her, she'd reply curtly. And when I brought it up with my mom, she said that she's going through a hard time, so I shouldn't make it worse. So I left it alone. That was until Bob confessed that Jane had been texting him consistently for the past few weeks. He showed me the text. She'd ask if she could call. 
She'd ask if she could call or meet him. She'd also attempt to text him late at night. The last one was when she sent him photos of her in revealing dresses and asked him to choose the prettiest. That's when he decided to tell me about it. Before anyone says anything, no, Bob didn't lead her on. His texts were dry, and frankly, if I wasn't so upset with my sister, I'd say rude. He felt uncomfortable, but decided to put up with it because she was my sister. He also admitted that Jane had, that Jane had confessed to him years ago, but he had rejected her. Oof. It felt like everything was falling into place when he told me that. I was so hurt by her. I immediately confronted her when I got home. I thought she'd at least be ashamed, but when she said, but she said that I stole him from her. What's worse is that my mom sided with her. Okay. Good job, mom. I've always had a feeling she was my mom's favorite, but she was my favorite too. It made sense that everyone loved Jane. I loved her too, but she betrayed me in the worst way possible. She even said she hated me and didn't want to see me again. No one sided with me, so I packed my things and left. My dad told me that I shouldn't leave because it's not appropriate for an unmarried girl to leave her parents' house. My mom even called me a hur for leaving to go to Bob's place. That hurt a lot. It took a long time for me to get over what they did. When I think about it, it still stings. Bob and I lived together before marriage. I also cut contact with my family, and Bob and I got married without inviting anyone from my side, aside from a few close relatives. It was a lovely wedding, by the way. But a week ago, my cousin told... But a week ago, my cousin told me Jane had her wedding. I guess she went ahead with it. Today, though, Bob showed me a message he got on Instagram from her. He hadn't seen it because it was in the request section, but it dated back to a week ago. She confessed to him again and told him she'd make him happier than me if he gave her a chance to. I am upset, really upset. He screenshotted it and blocked her and asked if it was okay to send it to Jim, but I said no. I don't know why. Jim deserves better, but I just don't want to deal with her anymore. I can't take it. Please tell me what to do. What advice would you give? I want to move on, but I also feel so guilty for keeping this away from Jim. However, I don't want this to blow up in my face, especially when Bob and I have been living so peacefully now. Edit! Thank you all for the solid advice, both on this post and my other post. I think deep down, I was still attached to the family who raised me, especially my sister. Your comments have given me a reality check. For those asking what I meant by this blowing up in my face, I know my sister. I'm afraid she'll come to my house with my mom and escalate things to the point that police are needed. But I also understand that she'll keep harassing my husband and ruining Jim's life further if we keep quiet. I took your advice and told Bob that he could contact Jim if he wanted. He said he'll think about it, so I'm leaving it at that for now. Personally, knowing his personality, he'll probably, he probably already sent it to Jim, even after I said no, but I'll wait to see what happens. Thanks again. If anything happens, I'll update. Uh, relevant info from Opie's comments. Opie mentioned that his dad's wife knows what his dad did to his late wife, Opie's mother. She doesn't care and actually defends their dad. Wait, this, these relevant info from Opie comments don't make sense. I think they're from a different story. (laughs) What is happening in this story? Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to ignore the relevant info from, from Opie comments right now. Oh yeah. Don't pretend those aren't there. You pretend those aren't there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I hear deleting those right now. Yes. There we go. Okay. So, um, in this position, uh, your, your sister is, <laughs> is a hot mess. Sister is an absolute mess for her to say, hug, I'm happy for you. And then say, how could you do this to me? I never want to see you again and pull mom into it to the point that she calls you a whore. This isn't just about her. This is parents being enablers and choosing her and just letting her run amok. Amok, amok, amok. Letting her run amok and and completely ruin their relationship with you. To the point that they didn't even get invited to the wedding. And here she is getting ready to marry this guy who obviously is... uh, is, is second place to her, if even that, and is still contacting your husband saying that she could make him happier and going all the way back to uni. She, she said that, uh, don't get your hopes up because he's not interested in a relationship. Obviously she had a way of knowing that because she had already tried. So she blessed it. Then she blessed it when she said that she was happy for you, um, in this relationship and gave you a hug. And it wasn't until you announced that you were getting married, that she had the breakdown and your family became divided and by divided. I mean, they all backed her. Her completely unsubstantiated claim that you stole him from her. 
We shall name her Galactus, Devourer of Worlds. She's going to leave a wake of destruction in her path that is going to make everyone around her that is still connected to her in any way, shape, or form miserable forever. Stay no contact with this biznatch. With this bizzo. With this bizzo. Who, by the way, is also... Dilulu. Thinking that she can just message your now husband and he's going to what? Just be like, oh, OK, she sent me an Instagram message and said that she'd treat me better than you. So I guess I'm going over to her house now. I guess I'm going to marry her. You and I need to get a divorce. She said she'd do. She'd uh, treat me better. Bish is Delulu. It's the saddest part of this is that the parents took her side. Mom, especially right. Dad, dad, it sounds like he's going to flow whichever direction that, that mom chooses. But her calling you what she called you and just choosing her without even having a discussion with you to be like, OK, what's actually going on here? Because then you could have explained that she blessed this multiple times. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. She is. she's going to have a miserable life. So, uh, yes, Jim does. Des he deserves to know. He absolutely deserves to know any of us put ourselves in his in his shoes and we would want to know. But the, their weddings already happened. Maybe maybe it's soon enough for them to get an annulment and for him to to save. At least part of the pain that he's going to inevitably go through. But no, you you are not the asshole here at all. Um, Jim deserves to know. I understand that you think by being any part of him finding out it's going to blow up in your face and you're probably right. You're going to be the devil that has ruined her life. No matter what you do, everything you do is about ruining her life because everything revolves around her. Right. So, yeah, just prepare for that. Uh, I think the more no contact you go with everyone and I, I would include blocking your mom, your dad, everybody, everybody who has taken her side, I would just block them. No contact. hundred percent. GTFO fam. Bye. Bye bye now. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Bye bye now. That's rough. Uh gosh dang. Uh let's see. Michelle, thanks for the donut. Pink Sunarienko, animal with them donuts too. Jules, Rebecca, Christian Museum girl, Sylvia Sylvia uh, Marcellino. Marcellino? Shaz, Michelle, Christian Museum Girl again, Old Girl Creations, Carrie Curtis, Ms. Helene, Matt, Samantha, Vero and Dan, Steph, Joy, S. Weaver, Tamed Chaos, thank you guys so much, Robin Hazen, Moonshine Girl, Rach, Michelle N., uh, Carly, welcome to the Gosh Hacking fam, glad to have you, uh, Pink, Fane, Robin Hazen, Janice, see you there as well, Donna, thank you guys so much, greatly appreciate it. Uh, Demon Peepers, Danny. Sending, sending all the positive vibes your way. All of them. All of them, all of them, all of them. Casanova, good to see you there. Welcome to the live. Tashi, no, you didn't miss You didn't miss too much, though. We're getting ready to bounce to story number. We've read three, but this last one was a reward story. We're at 558. That's a weird way to say that. 558 of 600 on the donut goal right now that is going to unlock a cake story. So, heck yes. He did already choose. Wait, he already chose the girl straight out of a drama. Watch yourselves. Oh, he already chose her. Uh, you're talking about Jim. You think Jim knows what he's getting into? Uh, I don't know that Jim knows the full extent of what he's getting into. Would you would you go through with marrying someone if you knew that they were messaging someone else's husband saying that they could take better care of them and they should leave their wife? Especially if you knew that person was her sister's partner. He told, yeah, he, she said it was okay for him to tell Jim. And then she said he probably already did because he was probably feeling guilty for not doing it in the place, in that place. So don't spoil. If there is an update, we will read it. If not today in another session, don't spoil. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Moonshine girl. Thank you so much. Oh, Candy Thunder is going to search for that real quick. And we achieved the donut goal. So let's go ahead and go through that. And maybe we'll have the update that we can dive into uh, after after we get through that. How about that? 
Animal 792 at that number one spot by a mile. Thank you so much. Uh, S. Weaver in the number two spot. Tanya Pimbleton in number three. Then we got Cole Barber, United Snorts of America. And 414, Sklingenfelter, the Mr. Beaumont, St. Thunderscore. And Harax and Katisi, Southern Country, Fane 13, Kozolo, Roberta Snyder, Ishami, Alicia... Alicia Reed, Robin Hazen, and gonna get a save on the rest, sir. Family is super toxic. Super, super toxic. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. La service est compris. Uh, Ishami, Alicia Reed, Robin Hazen, Salty Shellback Creative, Donna, 12661, LMD 10, the Kaylee, uh, the Kaylee, the Kale Yard Gardener, I, words are hard, the Kale Yard Gardener, Candy Thunder, Ms. Helene's House, Rebecca Barrett, Mama Silver, V Baby, Tabitha Train, Tabitha Trammel, Trammel, Words are hard, sorry. Adventures with Pam, Jelly 55, Old Girl, Shin- Shiny Girl, Erica Eternal, Boo 77, Sylvia Marcelino, Crystal Museum Girl, Julie Jules, Lorinda 75, The Muzz, uh, The Muzzwa, Emerald Seamer, Emerald Sea Mermaid, Moonshine Girl, Effulgent One, Lady Dead Puyo. Heck yeah, thank you guys so much. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Greatly appreciate it. Also, Tashi, welcome to the Gosh Hacking Fam. Glad to have you here. Amy Neals, Tame to Chaos, the Kaylee, the Kale Yard Gardener. I keep saying Kaylee. I'm sorry. Warrior Mom, uh, Anna, Animal, Mimi. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate that. Hi. It's pasted under the. It's right, yeah, it's right under the. Boopity 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 boop. Here's the update. Candy Thunder, Clutch. Let me set up the new goal real quick, and then I'll dive into the update. We got it. We got the update there. We are going to unlock the, another spicy story and a Caden Thunder appearance with this next one. Spicy story. If I could spell story and Caden Thunder. Boop. Caden Thunder is the eldest Thunder child for those who have not encountered him yet. Um... I think I got this right. Okay, we're going for 1.5k tiny dinies. We're going tiny dinies now. Tiny dinies mode. Tiny dinies. Amy, thank you. Thank you. 200 points to Candy Thunder. 50 points to Gryffindor. Okay, here we go. It is update time. Let me get a sip of water. Tashi, heck yeah. Glad to have you. Here we go. Here's the update. Hi, just wanted to make a small update. As I thought, Bob had already sent the message to Jim even when I told him not to. He also screen recorded the message to prove that it came from her account, which I didn't know he did. At least one of us is smart. Anyway, I won't go into too much detail, but Jim didn't reply until last night. He called Bob and they had a long chat. Apparently, when Jim confronted Jane, she tried to blame Bob for coming on to her. They had a fight and she left to stay with her parents. Shocking. What's going on over there, uh, Slammy Joe? <laughs> Seems like a perfect time to bang around the microwave door. It's perfect. I know a lot of you told me to send the screenshot to my parents. I did. I sent it to my dad, not my mom. Good call. I'm sorry, but I still can't find the strength to talk to her, and I don't think I ever will. My dad said he and mom will deal with it and to not tell anybody what Jane did. Are you fucking kidding me? I feel worse now for even thinking he'd side with me, lol. For anyone wondering whether Bob sent Jim the old messages from Jane from years ago, he didn't. He bought a new phone right after we cut contact, so he doesn't have those anymore. I don't know if Jim will divorce or annul Jane, but he told Bob not to contact him anymore, so I think I think we did our parts already. Thankfully, she hasn't come to my house, but I did take your advice about installing cameras. We'll be doing that next week. Thank you all for the help. You guys were right. Bob is my new family, so I'm not going to think about Jane or my parents anymore. We're having dinner at his parents tonight, so I'm rushing writing this LOL. Thank you again. I hope you all have a great day. What kind of piece of shit parents do you have here, OP? They're screaming enablers, 
screaming enablers. Yeah, that's real bad. Just don't just don't tell anybody about it. We don't we don't want anybody to know what a big what a piece of shit she is because she's still got a lot of other lives to ruin out there. OK. And Jim, I don't know. I don't know what Jim's play here is asking him, asking you guys to not contact him anymore. I'm like, does that mean they're going to try to work on this? Does that mean he's going to stay? Surely he had some idea of who she was already, but but, you know. There's a big difference between somebody being a dramatic pain in the ass and somebody being a cheating dramatic pain in the ass. There's a big difference. Hopefully, Jim does not stay with her. And and the parent, your parents, OP, I'm so sorry that you have to deal with this. Never talked to those fuckwads again, ever, ever. All they do is bring you harm. This is one of those zero is greater than negative one situations where even by talking to your dad, all it did was bring more negativity to your life. You felt completely unsupported. And all he did was cover for your for your Delulu sister. They've made their choice. So, yes, no contact for life. They will regret it in about five years when you've got a wee little tot running around they're going to be like, oh, we'd really like to reconcile and smooth things over. Oh, your sister's still living here, by the way. She's had three failed marriages to this point because she can't keep herself from texting other people's husbands. Shaking my head at sister here. Just shaking my head. Disappointed. Yeah, sister also gets this. Mom and dad have their favorite daughter that can do no wrong. Yeah, it's really funny that she's doing a lot of shit wrong, though, right? They're like, oh, don't tell anybody. Please don't tell anybody. Please don't tell anybody. The Kale Yard Gardener, you think it's ironic how it was inappropriate to move in before marriage, but adultery is fine. <laughs> yes yeah that is that is ironic it, it's okay for the sister to do whatever the fuck she wants to do because you know she's she's the golden child she's also like a golden child black sheep because she's just you know hell-bent on destruction but but yes it's a completely different set of of rules for the two of them the delulu sound scares you lady storm flies on yeah a little a little teeny bit hypocritical just just a wee bit just a wee bit Oh, don't tell because it'll bring shame on the family. Yeah, it doesn't. <sighs> she, the daughter, OP's sister, is bringing constant shame upon the family. But they're not worried about her changing the behavior. They're only worried about people finding out. That's an enabler. Paul for Southern Country, Anna, Samantha, Nana61, Sarcastic Cupcake, Ms. Pamela L, K's Sooner Yanko, K's again there with more tiny dinies, Brooke, Janice2014, Heather, Dionia Marsh, Sarcastic Cupcake again there, Shannon Aaron, Carly, Riaum. I hope I'm saying that right. Lorinda75, Michelle N, Tesha Mammoth, Nana61, Miss Eileen, Erica Eternal with a hundo and five tiny dinies there. Tanya Pimbleton, Little Red Corvette Girl, Brenda, uh, Christian Museum Girl, Southern Country, Girl Loves Her Whiskey, Mimi Since 11, Anna, you guys are awesome, Tiff Klassen, Savannah, Paul for 03, uh, Eaton, not going to catch me this time. Vanessa, thank you guys so much. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, we have not read the cake story yet, no. Uh, we had an update for for that spicy reward story, and now we can dive over to the cake story. Heck yeah. Here is the cake reward story. Before we dive into that, we're at 557 or 15 hundo on the tiny dining. We're at 675 or 777 on the members of the storm, and we are at 43% on the likes goal for the day. Let's rock and roll. This story is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Giving Up My Small Business? And it's from the AITA subreddit. I, 25 female, started my small business baking custom cakes when I was 19 years old. I've had mediocre success, gotten a few high value customers and had a bunch of repeat customers. I love baking. It's my creative outlet and takes me away from the stress of studying slash work. I'm currently studying law. Over the past six years, my dad has constantly thrown away my baking stuff, pans, packaging, ingredients, etc. Oh, thrown it away? 
He's even broken stuff before. We've constantly told him to stop, and I've had so many breakdowns with my boyfriend every time my stuff got thrown away or damaged because it would be over a thousand pounds worth of stuff, including sentimental items that I was gifted. Not a thousand pounds, like currency, not weight. Just clarifying. Hit a high yesterday when my brother accidentally melted my acrylic cake scraper and some other tools. My dad gave me a tiny cupboard in the kitchen. We had a house extension in which my dad made our kitchen the size of a corridor, despite his brothers and sisters telling him to renovate the kitchen to actually accommodate me and help me out. My stuff doesn't all fit in that cupboard naturally, so I often leave some stuff on the counter. My dad shoves it all in the oven, which damages the oven. He's done this before, and we had to buy a new one. My brother turned on the oven to preheat it without emptying it first. Complete mistake, and I don't blame him for doing it for doing that, but I told him he needs to be more careful. I can't find the same one, and I was shattered because it was gifted to me by a famous baker who helped me out from when I started baking. I'm now just done. I don't have the mental energy to carry on these arguments and everything. I don't have the money to keep replacing everything he's thrown away and broken. It's, it just doesn't make logical sense to carry on. My boyfriend and my mom are upset at this decision. My mom has constantly helped me out, helps me clean up, and is my number one supporter and biggest fan. My boyfriend admires the fact that I've got this little side business and has spent the last four years helping me grow it and helping me elevate it, even buying the domain and building the website. I told them both I'm done, and they just can't see where I'm coming from at all. So Reddit, am I the ass not for giving up on my small business? Do your mom and boyfriend here not know what your dad is doing this is this is constant sabotage by your father you're 25 now i understand that you're staying in their house but if these are actual items that you own and he is actively throwing them out or destroying them isn't that destruction of property would would you have a case like a legal case for this or because it it's happening in his home he has the right to destroy it throw it out do they know that he's constantly sabotaging this? And why, 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 why is he doing this? What does he hate about it so much? He, is it is it him thinking that, that oh no, I think she's going to get distracted doing this and not give her all to law school and not become the lawyer that I always wanted her to be? And because of that risk is just saying, I'm just going to throw him out? It's possible. Is he an attorney? I'm guessing he's an attorney if she's going to law school and she he definitely doesn't want her to get distracted and probably sees a lot of promise with how this business has grown and uh, and is just getting rid of a potential distraction here. Meg's world. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely talk to mom and the boyfriend here and be like, here's why they can't see where she's coming from at all. So they definitely don't understand it. Put it on paper. See, this is the amount of all the shit that he's thrown away. This is these are all the things that he does to make it as difficult as possible. Um, I would say, you know, at 25, keep your business, lose the dad, move out. I, I understand that that makes it a lot more difficult financially because then you got to have your own space. If you're if you're doing this, you have to have a larger kitchen, if not be renting a commercial kitchen. There are a lot of things there, but remove the threat and the threat right now is your dad. Find a way to take him out of the equation. I don't mean take him out. I mean, take him out of the equation where he can't damage your business that he's actively doing here. And then uh, don't give up on it. Don't give up on it. It's your choice because it's your business. But I am urging you not to give up on it here. I think having a side hustle all the time is great. Ask mom if she could sue her dad for the cost of damages. I... Hmm. Kira, daughter of a programmer, professional artist here. Some cannot see a creative career as sustainable. I, I get it. And if if her dad is an attorney and she's pre-law or she's in law school right now, that makes a lot of sense why he would want to be treating this as a distraction. I'm not saying I condone it at all. I don't because it's ridiculous. Also, having having legal training and starting your own business is entirely beneficial. Like she that that training she's getting right now on the legal side of things is going to be beneficial to her as she grows this business to to scaled levels here. And it doesn't mean she has to give up on that. She doesn't have to give up on, on being a lawyer. If she grows this business to the point that she can actually bring people in, like hire people to run the day to day operations on it, she can still have it. It could still be her baby. She could grow this thing to something monstrous, but he keeps snuffing it out. 
And that is not okay. Um, this is dad. Dad that asked on Juan, real big piece of shit. And for him to not even say, look, this is why I'm doing this, just to do it over and over again and throw everything in the oven, knowing full well that there is a, a large risk of somebody turning that oven on and ruining, every, ruining everything. He clearly doesn't give a shit because the alternative is he's going to throw it away. Why would you not want to support your child's growing business? And by support, I mean, just don't harm it. It's not that hard. It's not that hard to just stay out of the fucking way, Dad. Alexa, I don't see how a father could do this to his child. Yeah. It's his pride getting in the way now because if he is an attorney and she's going to law school, or maybe he's not, but she's supposed to be the child that becomes... Maybe he's living vicariously through her, and he always wanted to go to law school, so she's supposed to be the one that uh, that achieves everything, and, and is the symbolic. She's symbolic of the family succeeding finally, and he doesn't want anything to get in the way. She could be a bigger success with her baking company than she could be as an attorney. It may not happen as quickly, but she has all kinds of opportunities here. And the fact that he's not even willing to see it when this is her passion, it's something she actually enjoys doing, is on him. It's entirely on him. And if it's something that helps her de-stress, why would you mess with it, Erica? Yeah, he sees it as a, as a risk. That's, that's the vibe I'm getting from it right now. Um, so, no. Am I the asking out for giving up my small business? <sighs> yeah, it, it not... To anyone else, so NTA, not an ask not to anyone else, but to yourself, for sure. Um, and, and you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say a three to yourself here because you should do this differently. The only, the only negative that you have going against this business is your father. That's it. It's the only negative thing. Everyone else has been supporting it. You've been growing this business. You have an established online presence. You have an established clientele. The only thorn in all of this is your dad. So I'm saying just think about it differently. Now, what probably is happening here is that if dad is paying for law school, he's removing distractions because it doesn't want you to be distracted and fail at the law school thing but him to not have an adult conversation with you and to still treat you like a child and just throw your shit away that is a him problem chances are if you try to leave or try to you know remove him as the threat from the situation by leaving or baking it in a different kitchen or something like that he's going to threaten to pull funding for law school and then he's going to have you hostage so i know you have a lot to weigh here but think about it differently i wouldn't be so quick to give up and I say quick, I know it's been a, you know, a six year journey here, but I wouldn't give up just yet. Not yet. See if there's a way to remove the threat before you just throw your hands up and say, I'm done. Ah, United Snorts of America. My goal is to raise happy, confident and well-adjusted humans. Yeah. Uh, they're in the EU. He's probably not paying for school. Oh, then he's got less power over you. If he doesn't have any power over you, why, why, why give him power over? Why hand him power? You're giving him the power to control your future right now. Don't give him any power that he doesn't already have. Grace for life. Fane, Sooner Yanko, Peggy Wheelie, Dejard, user five, five, lots of numbers there. Um, Marina CLDS, user 55, lots of numbers there too. Queen U, Annette Madron, Tiffany, Madam Maeve, Queen U again there, Candy, Thunder, Sandra, Walden, Wadib, Wadib, Peggy, Wheelie, Desjard again there, Queen U, Mandela, Will, Ethan, Rezzy Girl, Wayward, Bobby, Robin, you guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Just Mags, Fane, and Haraksen, Kira Wilson Art. Thank you guys. Peggy, Wheelie, Desjard, see you there again. 50% through the Tiny Diny goal, which again is going to unlock. A spicy story and Caden Thunder. Dad may be jealous because he didn't have the guts to chase his dreams. That, uh, uh, oh, and Melissa says in the comments, she says she's South Asian. It's definitely viewed as a distraction. Okay. 
<laughs> for dad to just be like actively sabotaging everything because he thinks it's a distraction is extremely small minded. Um, and for him to have the inability to see that either this can be a parallel path. Uh, if she keeps this as a side hustle while she's still an attorney, like it could be extremely lucrative. Plus it's also fulfilling for her. This fills up her cup and she makes money doing it. Why the hell would you be opposed to this? I understand you think it's a distraction, but guess what? If she's doing well in law school and rocking this side hustle, just keep your fucking mouth shut, dad. And stay out of the way. And quit sabotaging everything. Because in five years, you're going to be like, man, my daughter hasn't talked to me in five years. What's a uh, can't imagine why. Can't imagine. Southern Country, Tanya Pimpleton, Peggy Willie, Dijard, Moonshine Girl, uh, Myra Catalina or Mi- Mira? Mira, Myra, Myra. And Hunter and Tanya Pimpleton, uh, Nana61, Peggy, Just Mags, Fane. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. Uh, this can also pay for her school, is the father's thinking. Oh, you know what? That's potential there, too. Myra. Okay, got it. Need to, need to give dad advice? Uh, <clears throat> with the cultural differences, I'm sure that has a lot to do with his his viewpoint on this right now. And that's tough to bridge the gap on. But in general, look, if there's something that is fulfilling for your kids, just the fact that your, your child and she's 25, she's an adult child, but just the fact that your child found something that they're passionate about that they can actually make money on is, is hitting the jackpot as a parent that is hitting the jackpot. So many people never find the thing that they're really passionate about that fulfills them. So many people never find that period, even as a hobby for someone to find it that's creatively fulfilling for them and they can make money doing it is is so rare. And to be able to just completely discard that is very, very small minded. And it's just a sign of weakness on him. If I would say to say anything to him that tried to connect with him, it would it would be your behavior shows you as weak father. Get over it. Dick. That's all I got to say about that. Oh, man. You don't have to say the dick part. Everything else will be good, though. Okay, we're going to jump to our next story here. We're at 796 of 15 hundo. Um, Let me look at something real quick here. Before I do this, Candy Thunder, would you like to give up and uh, jump up and give your your Sam's Club parking lot story since you're back now? Many people are very excited to hear it. Many people very excited to hear. I didn't hear. What did Tony Sparks say? I'm very excited. I don't care at this point. You people have been so mean. I thought she was coming to the desk. She just walked right by me. I don't know what's happening now. I don't know what's happening now. We are going to get her up here. And before we do that, we're just going to dance for a second. Oh, here she is. Here, tell you what. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Candy. Candy. Thunder. Thunder. Oh, Tony, it's still going on. Still. Still happening. Uh... Also, whenever you said that people wanted to hear this story, uh, Tony goes, do they? Do they? <laughs> they do. Mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Tony is salty. Pour some, pour some salt on him. There were, there were several indicators. <laughs> okay. There were several indicators that they, that they did want to... Here. Um, but we'll hear we'll give him grace because his auction is this weekend and I, I feel like he says he's not stressed, but the saltiness is saying otherwise. I'm not stressed. You've got a okay. salty sea breeze I'm following you behind. Being criticized. I've been called a criminal and a lawbreaker today. <laughs> okay. So I Ava and I went to Sam's on um Friday to get stuff for Easter and I'm talking to my mom on the way there and we pull into a parking spot and um, I continue the call. It went on for like five more minutes. Um, There's someone in front of me that comes out and they had um, they were like walking around their car and she looked at me and she goes like telling me to back up. And I was like, oh, maybe I'm too close to the line. So I back up like a foot 
And and she looks at me and she's like, just telling me to go back. And I'm like, I, I can't go back any farther or else I'll be out of the spot. And it's the Friday before Easter at Sam's Club in the Midwest. And I don't know if you guys know, like Sam's Club is just insane all the time. Um, it's always busy. So I, I'm like, I don't know what you want me to do. And so I rolled down my window and she's like, can you move? And I'm like, uh, where? And I'm like, and she's like, you know, just down over there into another spot. And I'm like, okay, uh, why? And she says that she needs to put a bike rack on her car. And I'm like, I'm like, I, I don't want to move further away from like the door. I'm like, I'm getting ready to go in and and I asked her if, if she could move so that she could put the bike rack on her car. And she's like, oh, well, I didn't think about that. And I'm like, and then she moves. Um, and then she had pulled through the spot. So it was like her back end was at the line. So she pulled through, she moved and pulled through on like another spot. So her back end was still at the line. And I was just like, so I just had to ask if I should have moved or should I have done what i did i guess that's the should question I aita I go now? yes and sam's club oh man i love sam's but holy crap is it busy all the time yeah sorry that's... i talk really fast i'm sorry <laughs> like i was just like i was like taken aback because i'm like what like i would never ask anyone to move i'm like i would just move my car and do what i needed to do or if i had to put a bike rack on i'm like i would have parked at the back of the parking lot where i had but it was like the fact that the thought that she should move her car never even crossed her mind. And I was like, what the hell did I just walk into? But our our shopping trip was OK. It was just there was a lot of people. Too many no, she people. was just she just wanted to put a bike rack on the back of her car. So I'm like, OK, 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 <laughs> OK. <laughs> and my mom was on the phone and she was like, what? <laughs> you know, yeah, I've you guys have to meet my mom someday, but. Karen and training. There you go. Yeah, it was it was a very <laughs> odd. This whole this whole week has just been very wild. So, oh, there you have new word, new things for the don't, private. Don't watch it. Don't watch it. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Good job. Um. Anyway, so a tiny little story, but I just had to check, and I was like, normally, um, me fifteen years ago would have just moved my car like immediately. Would have been like, yeah. and I'm still a people pleaser, but uh. I, I, it was just very weird. The whole interaction was very weird. <laughs> this could only happen to Candy Thunder, by the way. It's like it's, it, she attracts <laughs> just madness uh, in public. She attracts the crazy drivers. She attracts like the the shit that just. Yeah. Speaking of shit, um, Navy in the past week. I'll just go ahead and tell you guys because you will probably get a kick out of it. But she, um, has number two in the our bathroom floor. Um, in the bathtub and in the shower as of last night. We're potty training. Um, yes. And she is go terrified up. to go in the toilet. And it is, it's, she's breaking my soul at this point. Um, so last night when it was in the shower and I was just like, oh my God. After cleaning it up, you know, two other times within the same week, I was like, I got, I got mad. I got angry. And I'm like, Navy Harlow and she sat on the toilet and clearly didn't have to go anymore because she just did it in the shower floor um so anyways I felt guilty for getting mad at her for pooping we have a sticker chart she doesn't care like she does not care <laughs> and so, that's where yeah. I'm like I am at a loss so if you guys I'll post a video on my page and you guys can come give me all your tips and tricks and all of that stuff but uh Anyway, so I'm, I've cleaned up so much of her stuff. I'm just like, I'm so done. Um, so I got mad and then I felt really guilty about being mad. And I get in the shower this morning and the whole shower head blows off the wall, lands on my foot. And the shower is just coming out this tiny little hole, spraying me in the face. And it just felt like instant karma for getting mad at her. Slightly uh, delayed karma, but yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, well, I'd say 12 hours is pretty, pretty instant. But anyways, yeah. So it literally the whole shower wall or sh shower. Faucet. Yeah. It, well, it's yeah. it's yeah, it's the the top <laughs> like rainfall so thing and then the long pipe and the uh, the handle part that goes with it, too. I, I hear yeah. screaming and I get up and run in there and look and the whole shower apparatus is just laying on the ground. Poo and land. she's and she's like, okay. I'm like, what? Everything is broken. See, everything the is broken. <laughs> it was just so freaking funny. I mean, she pooped in the shower. I yelled at her for pooping in the shower. 
And then the shower fall, like thing shoots off at my face and lands on my foot. I think that's karma. That's I don't think it is. I don't think <laughs> I it don't is. Know. If okay. anything, the shower was like, why'd you let somebody shit in me, huh? <laughs> so the shower has it's standing up for itself. <laughs> yep. I know that's and I'm not I'm not one that like yells like that at her because I try to be very like graceful and give her as much of that as I can. But dude, three times in one week makes me. Yeah, it. it it hit a nerve. That's for sure. Okay. She, she found the poo nerve. Calamity candy. Yes. Oh, calamity you wrote candy it. For sure. <laughs> I calamity somebody candy. Somebody else wrote it. Yep. Calamity candy. Okay. Bye, guys. Enjoy the next thing. I'm sweating. <laughs> she says she's sweating. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, she she is doing a really really good job at the number one side of potty training. It's the number two part that we're having a, a hard time with. And I think it's a timing issue. I don't think she she fully understands the timing part of it yet, but we'll get there. We'll get there. It's just, uh, you know, everything is broken week while potty training. And she also just got over a bug. So she like she's extra cranky is uh, it's, been two weeks. it's been it's been like the perfect storm of bullshit. It's about a good time. I've got an eye twitch. It won't go away. Hey, what the F with the hand hearts. Thanks so much for that. Lacey Burnett with the tiny, tiny moonshine girl. Lacey again there. Jamie, Steph Riddle, Jamie, Nicole, uh, Steph again there. Shamika, Fraser, Alfie, Kid Roscoe with all kinds of gifts there too. Thanks so much. Uh, Fainted Druin, uh, Bammy Rose, Sue Missy, Old Girl Creations, the Kale Yard Gardener, Bammy Rose again there. Thank you so much. Alexa Taylor, Old Girl Creations. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Try crying next time. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's just been like a high tension kind of, kind of time. Greg, it was the perfect storm in the storm household. Yeah. 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 I, I keep hearing this. It's mercury retrograde that it, I don't know if that's the cause, but, but everything has been in complete disarray. It's just been weird. Tashi, Sarah Bass, Donna, DJ, Sooner Yanko, Samantha, Peggy, Wheelie, Desjard, Alexa, Southern country. Thank you guys so much. Uh, yeah, it's everybody bubbles over sometimes everybody it, it, you know, and we had this conversation last night because Candy Thunder was feeling really bad. And I'm like, Navy is fine. She is going to be fine. It's she's we'll get through it. She's not harmed by, you know, if we get to a boiling point, it doesn't. She's fine. She's fine. It is a whole thing for sure. Uh, okay. So here we go. Story three. Officially on my document here. This story is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for refusing to help my dad's wife with their baby and saying I am not her helper? Dad and I, 17 male, do not have a good relationship. When my mom was sick with cancer, my dad was out cheating on her and he left me to take care of my younger siblings, 12 female and 11 male. He even let me catch him with two different women during that time and my mom was on hospice, so it was really difficult not to say anything, but I was so overwhelmed and scared that saying the wrong thing would take her from us sooner. Wow. Kids not dealing with enough. This was four years ago and I never forgave him for what he put me through. I told him before that I never want to be like him when I grow up and he's no role model for me. I also called him a failure as a husband and a father. He was pissed at being called a failure as a father, but when his three kids needed him the most, he wasn't there. Instead, he was screwing women on the side. He also said he loved my mom and never wanted me to stay and never wanted me to say he was all bad as her husband. I said, I said, I found it so hard to believe and he would never convince me that he actually loved her. I was still mostly in charge after my mom died, but eventually my siblings started to pick up some skills, so I wasn't basically doing it all. It really helped and made us regular siblings again instead of me being almost dad. But it was also tough because they're really young, and I hated that they were forced to grow up so fast. Losing mom did that anyway. Dad met someone a couple of years ago, and he introduced her to us last year, and it took only a few weeks for her to move in. Then suddenly she's pregnant, and they race to get married. My dad's wife tried to involve my siblings and me in her pregnancy, in her pregnancy excitement, but I wasn't excited and I don't think they were either. I'm pretty sure we were. I'm pretty sure we all avoided her as much as we could. The baby was born in December and she has been reaching out to me to help pretty often, but I don't help her. I check in on my siblings when I can, but other than that, I focus on me. I know biologically that the baby is my half-sibling, but I don't care. I don't see them as a sibling, and I'm not planning to bond with them or keep them in my life once I'm in college. I won't speak to dad either, just my siblings. 
Recently, dad's wife has been pressing more for for my help. And the other day she asked me why I could be such a great big brother to my other siblings, but I have never even held her baby or cooed over her baby. She told me she sees me do so much for my siblings and knows I was the person who helped them through when my mom was sick and then when she died. She told me she figured I would want the same for her baby. I told her it wasn't my job to help and get her husband if she and get her husband to help if she needed it. She told me she wanted her baby to be accepted and none of us had accepted the baby yet. None of us had interacted with the baby yet. She said it's not fair and she needs help. I told her I'm not her helper and she needs to hire someone if she wants the help or again get dad. But I won't be doing anything for her or her baby. She called me disgusting. Am I the astronaut? Relevant info from OP's comments. Oh, here's where that came in from earlier. Tony, I think this was the. Yeah, yeah. Now it all makes sense. We swapped around. It was a whole thing. Relevant info from OP's comments. OP mentioned that his dad's wife knows what his dad did to his late wife, OP's mother. She doesn't care and actually defends the dad. OP doesn't consider the new baby his family and doesn't think that will change. He cares for his siblings because he feels that is what his mother would have wanted. Uh, this so the question was, am I the Askinosh for refusing to help my dad's wife with their baby and saying I'm not her helper? No, hell no. I think it is it is uh um uh, Lady Van Landingham, I agree with you on this. The baby is innocent. However, however, the, you cannot force OP into this. You can't force a blended family. You cannot force, you sure as shit cannot force uh, kids from a blended family to be your enlisted help when you have a new baby. You don't get to do that. She said it's not fair and she needs help. So this is borderline like parentification. She, she trying to get them to do work, but she got with him and made the assumption that the three kids that existed that he had would just become her little helpers. You don't get to assume that you earn trust. You don't just get it automatically. And this all goes back to dad, right? Dad, uh, faith owed for real, um, and destroy the relationship he had with his, with his oldest. And now that he's starting a new family. You don't even hear anything about him trying to force things in here. He like, well, once he got married to, to new wife and she had a baby dad, what like disappeared and it's just new wife at home with a baby and her trying to get the other kids to, to jump in and help with things. You can't force that on them. You can nurture it in a positive way. You can breadcrumb to it. You can, lead them to it but it has to be a positive nurturing experience it cannot be hey y'all get over here and help you get over here and help because i saw you help with your other younger younger siblings and i want that for mine i'm sure you do but it doesn't just happen automatically you don't inherit that because because you married my dad also you condone the shit that he did which affected my whole life so what do you what do you expect to happen here no you're nta op you have every right to refuse to help. You're not the helper. If she needs help, that's on her to figure it out. It's blend to family too. So what would she do if the man she married didn't have kids? She'd have to get help from elsewhere, right? The attitude of the people who they aren't even like asking in a nice way. She's saying, she's saying, I see you do this for other people. Why don't you do it for, for me? That's not asking nicely. That's not, you know, trying to build a relationship. That's just trying to make somebody feel guilty she's trying to guilt you into doing it she's not even asking nice about it so no hell no why is it daddy the helper for sure dad just like ghosted from the whole picture as soon as as soon as new wife had a baby here not even talked about oh kimby says the dad is probably getting the next person pregnant yeah new wife new wife was she defended dad's actions when he cheated on uh op's mom while she was on hospice she defended it so okay you support his actions that caused me all kinds of trauma and problems and i had to be the dad for for my younger siblings because of that so cool now you're lumped in with him and you and i will never talk again no relationship no contact i'm here for my siblings and that's it you can't force anything beyond that Bet the stepmom is struggling because the dad won't do anything to help at all. Bob says for sure. That's not OP's problem, though. That's a that's a her problem. That's a relationship problem between her and dad. And if she was the side piece. 
come what may. He married her to raise the kids, V-Baby. <laughs> How'd that work out, Dad? How did that work out? Because he's apparently incapable of being a father. So he had to marry somebody else to be a mother. So he didn't have to take part in raising the kids at all. Luckily, the younger siblings are independent enough to be able to do some things for themselves now. So OP, who's 17, doesn't have to be the dad of the family anymore. But dad was never the dad of the family. Married someone else to have them do the work. But she just had a baby. She needs help, too. At some point, dad... You're going to have to do something and be an active father or you're going to have no family at all. Kids are already on the way of, of never talking to you again. Your oldest is already there. The 12 and 11 year old at some point are going to figure everything out. They're going to know the story. They're going to be no contact with you. And it's not looking really good for the relationship that you started right now. Figure it out. Figure it out. Where's her family? Uh, unknown. Probably disowned her because she was, you know, sleeping with a married man whose wife was on hospice. Moonshine girl with the lightning bolt. Tila Smith with 132 tiny dinies. Heck yeah. Moonshine girl again there. Aspen Mundus. Tanya Pimbledon. Uh, Rebecca Bain. Miss Anime. Tanya again there. Beth. Lacey Burnett. Welcome to the Gosh I Could Fam. Glad to have you. Jetta Howell. Old Girl Creations. Christi, Kristen Fleury. Steffens. Valkyries Cry. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate the love. Boo Boo. See you there as well. Janet Lopez. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jim Finn, why do you think women don't want men anymore? Hey, I, I get it. I get it. We're, we're not great as a whole. We're, we're, you know, I get it. I get it. Uh, wait, I thought OP was 17 four years ago when his mom died. No, it says dad and I 17 male don't have a good relationship. So, um, so four years ago, he would have been 13 and, and the man of the house. How bad that makes it suck even worse. <laughs> That's true. Peppermint, which says OP, who was 14 at the time, managed to take care of multiple kids. New wives having trouble with the one. I, I mean, new babies are tough, right? It definitely takes a teamwork approach. And dad, dad doesn't really seem like a team player. You know, dad doesn't seem like a team player at all. Emancipation, Brooke. Yeah. So he, he may be OP, maybe in uh, like starting uni early or have uh, an offsite school because he said when, when he comes back, he checks on his siblings. <laughs> Ellen says, ah, I told my hubs if we ever get divorced, I'm switching teams. LOL. <laughs> Candy Slender says the same. <laughs> oh my gosh zoe thanks for the follow uh sierra with the follow there as well thank you thank you thank you dad team playing and only making the baby oh for sure Ugh. Ugh. 1185 of 1500 on the tiny dinies right now let me reset my scene here i'll just be old with pets alone haha -ha, brooke <laughs> lots of dogs Build the bed. Oh, yeah. Build the bed. Candy, Lund King. Candy, Candy Thunder has this unique ability to to like raise animals to be the neediest, most broken psychological animal they could possibly be. It is absolutely true. It is absolutely true. <laughs> Oliver, the Silky Terrier, the little one, has this thing where he has to have his butthole touching something. And by something, I mean someone. So he'll come over and set his butt on Luna's paw. Or if she's not there, he'll back it up to Ava Thunder. He'll back it up and just like, it's like an octopus. It's like a, or like a starfish or something. He's like, he's like attaches to people right there. Because psychologically, he needs to be touching someone else all the time. But he's got to do it with his butt. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. Uh, and, and when... When Candy Thunder leaves the house, they go into like hibernation mode. Like they'll they'll just pick a spot in the living room and they'll just like shut down, shut down and stare at the door and wait for mama to get back. I could be walking around the house. I could walk right by them. And I'm like, hey, and I'll pet Luna on the head. And she's like, I'm staying right here. So mom gets back. <laughs> uh, 
Oh yeah. And last night, last night, uh, I, I've got this thing with, with Luna. She loves to climb up in our bed and get in my spot. Uh, and, and she's got this thing where she positions her body to where her ass is normally on my pillow. And I'm like, I don't really want dog ass on my pillow. I don't want to put my nose like right where a dog's butthole has been. So I try to stack an extra pillow up over mine. But then even then I try to keep her butt away from it. So I came in the bedroom and she was laying there with her butt right there. And I'm like, all right, get down, get down, get down. So I go in there to like brush my teeth and get my clothes ready for the next day. Come back out and she's right there again. She's right there again. I'm going to get pink eye. Yeah. From a dog who puts its asshole on my pillow. Everything is broken. Dogs included. Good gravy. Get a cat. Mine spoons with me at night. Ellen, we have a cat. We have a cat who who gives Luna like kiatsu massages. She like gets on her back and is like. And then she cleans her. Yeah, and then cleans. She treats Luna like a pillow to the point that Luna gets kind of upset about it. To the point that Luna will lay on the floor next to her giant bed, her dog bed, because she knows if she lays in the dog bed that Arya, the cat, is going to come use her as a pillow. She's got, the cat has all the dogs like prison bitch whipped. For sure, Luna, the 85-pound doodle, is like, uh, this is this is your bed, ma'am. This is, yes, ma'am, this is your bed. It's It's... It's a sight. Uh, yeah, the sticky note says, stop saying butthole. It's kind of like, what was Angel was sick last night, and, and your boy dog Gotham held you all night. Aw. Aw. Why do cats make biscuits? Live goal achieved, Tiny Dinies. Heck yes. So we have unlocked another spicy story and a Caden Thunder appearance. Heck yeah. Let's get into this. Erica Eternal taking the number one spot there. Chef Tila in the number two spot. Then TLS Journey. Southern Country, Tanya Pimpleton. Animal 792, Lovely Rainy Day. Mrs. Alice Cole Barber, Taylor Dactyl. Tashanti. Fane, Ann Hoxton, Tesh, 179, Candy Thunder, Mimi since 11, Kelly McMillan, McMillan, Emerald, Sea Mermaid. Can I get a save on those, please? You were totally the little spoon, Angel. There was a moment we were watching Shit's Creek last night, and I was laying on my side, and Candy Thunder got up to go pee or get a drink or something, and she was coming back, and she, she walked to my side of the bed. Uh... And then she like grabbed the blanket to adjust it or something. But I was like, I'm not going to shit you for a second. I was like, she's about to big spoon me. I don't know how to take this. I was like, I... I, it was just weird. It felt it, it was weird. Tash, Candy Thunder, Mimi Synth 11, Kelly McMillan, Emerald Sea Mermaid, an A414, Anna Joe, V Baby, Shannon Aaron, Lacey Burnett, Ishami, Boo77, Jennifer Webster, Outdoor Girl, Adventures with Pam, Anise Moon, um, Afro Tyne, Diesel Lover, Ms. Pamela L, Moonshine Girl, Mandala Will, Brooklyn Baby, Lady Dead Pulio, Lady Dead po- Lady Dead Pulio. Not that Ellen Young and Fuller, Donna 12661, Eaton, Jilly 55, Madam Maeve, Rebecca Bain, Cheeky Face, Lorinda, Anna Hansen. Thank you guys so much for that. Sorry that words are hard and that, you know, the words that come out of my face are usually wrong. I'm, I'm sorry for that. I'm thinking about it. Let me get the next one set up here. This one is going to unlock a confetti cannon. Heck yes. Confetti. And with that, let's go ahead and bring up another guest here, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Hey, chat. How's it going, chat? Chat, is this real? What's good, chat? How's it going? Take it. 
แตกหนักแล้วเช็คสิ How's everybody doing What y'all been up to? I'm doing good. I'm doing. I'm doing good. I'm tired. Good. Seems like you guys are doing good. That's good. Um. Summer plans. We got uh, a plan. Yeah. Beaches and. We're going to the beach. Beaches and burgers. We're going to 30A. Yeah. When is that happening? Uh, Late June, July. July. Can Late July. Uh, 30A. Yeah, I just got our Allegiant flights booked. When is it happening? Uh, the end of July. End of July. There mm -hmm. we go. Your first Be flight. Mm -hmm. You're booked. Mm -hmm. Ayo. You want a window seat? Yeah. Like an aisle seat? You want I want a window, window seat. Okay. I want to look yeah. out the window. For sure. So I can see when we're crashing. For sure. Well, Swizzy wants to know what your yeah. what your tattoos are. Huh? Swizzy wants to know oh. what your tattoos are. Um, I have a dragon on this arm, and then I have a horseshoe and the elemental good? symbols and a butterfly. I want to get more. Um... <laughs> What should I talk about? I don't know what to talk about. The Kim ingredients of an apple? Uh, no, it has the... Five the, boroughs. The boroughs of New York. It'd be cool if it had the chemical ingredients of an apple, though. That would be cool. That would be that would be pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> I, I'd like that. Apple. What uh, what music <laughs> you guys been listening to lately? Hit me with the, hit me with the music. What's the... I mean, should we talk about it? I don't know. I think we'll get flamed. What, album? I'm just gonna say it. I didn't like that Beyonce album. I'm sorry, sorry, chat. I didn't care. I, I, I'm not a hater. Everybody, you know, everybody's musical ears are tuned to different frequencies. You know, my ears were most definitely not tuned to that Beyonce album's frequency. Nor were Tony's. I feel like we gave it a fair shot. We gave it a fair shot. We listened to almost the entire thing. We tried. It did not work. Yeah, good for her. Good for her. Beyonce, you can try country. I don't think it worked very well, but I think the 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 amount of people saying it's like the best album of the year to me. What? I I who said that? She said. I mean, she listen. I'm not hating. She can do her thing. I know there are people who who really liked it. People calling it a masterpiece. She does have an absolutely amazing voice. She's extremely talented. I'm not saying I don't like Beyonce, but the album just wasn't it. this album just didn't hit for me. The it's 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 like it's not all country. I don't even know what to describe it as. It's not. It has opera. It has like yeah. country rap. She raps in it. It's, it's uh, confusing. I don't know. It was a it was a masterpiece of shit. Uh See, someone said they loved it. I think it just. I know, I know people yeah. did like it, and that's me, good if you did like it. Me, personally, I just, I yeah, couldn't... To be fair, there were a couple songs where we were like... Oh. There were a couple songs that were pretty good. The one with Post Malone? I love Post Malone. Miley was pretty good. The Miley Cyrus one was Her pretty Jolene good. The cover wasn't bad. I didn't like the Jolene cover. It wasn't, it was, it was okay. I don't, I didn't like it. The Miley... It was, she, Malone. like, she can sing really well. I just think the album didn't flow, like, how... I wanted it to, but Something that's okay because it's not. It's clearly not, not an album yeah. that's for me. Music so. is different for everybody, so I'm sure there are people that it is like spot on. We'll for. we'll that's see. Awesome. Uh, Somebody asked you your favorite coworker. My favorite coworker. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely, definitely Candy Thunder. Okay. <laughs> yep. Somebody asked me. I'm hurt. Don't tell you it is today. Well, you're a boss so day. what is she i guess she's a boss too she's my boss yeah well you know um yeah i got too i got too busy talking about beyonce my bad i was stressing but uh, you know i've been i've been just listening to uh i don't know what i listen to i've been listening to that future album i know you guys aren't aren't heavy into rap like i am but the future and metro Boomin album Pretty good. They 
Kendrick Lamar taking shots at Drake and J. Cole. It's pretty pretty crazy. Do I have any pets? No. But what kind of dog are you looking for? Uh I like lots of kinds of dogs. <laughs> I like I like pugs. I like corgis. I like baby basset hounds. Just babies. A ba- <laughs> Baby Bassett Hounds. I only really like puppies. Once I get too big, throw When's my album gonna come out? When I hit a thousand followers. Go follow at Caden Thunder. K A D I N T H U N D E R. And Tony Spar. And I'll drop an album at a thousand. I'll drop an album at a thousand followers. There you go. All right, I'll go ahead and jump back. All right. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, Caden Thunder. Follow up. I, I know artist objective, and it's different for everybody, and musical tastes are, you know. That's a very personal thing. Um, so I didn't I didn't expect to like the album in the first place. So because it's just not my jam. But in general, it felt forced to me. You know what I mean? Felt it felt very forced. So uh so I'm sure I'm sure for some people it was like dead on, and I think that's awesome. Um I think I think the fact that uh yeah. Yeah, it just felt forced to me. That's all I can say. Uh, Miles is not here right now. Miles dipped out a little bit earlier today. Uh, Adri, you're looking for Caden Thunder's TikTok? You could just search up Caden it's Thunder. He'll... Tony, Spark <laughs> Tony Spark says it's at Tony Spark underscore. I have a feeling that's not. That's not. That's While not. you're following Caden Thunder, you might as well drop at Tony Spark underscore follow. That is at Tony Spark underscore. <laughs> Angel. I like, Angel says, dear Beyonce, this is Texas. Been down a shine down kick lately. Oh, that's yeah, I went to. I go through a lot of Foo Fighters kicks. Like Foo Fighters is is one of those bands that I that I also have not seen live, and I'm like, how? I don't know. Uh, but but I have to see them. I have to have to do it. Have to do it. Okay, we'll go ahead and bounce to the next story here. We're at ninety of a hundo already on the uh, the confetti here. I do have a spicy story, spicy reward stories to give to you. So let's dive into that. This story is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, am I the astronaut for telling my brother he's single because he's pathetic and a walking red flag? A little harsh, maybe deserved. We'll find out. My 32 female brother, Carl, 27 male, was spoiled for eight years because he almost died. The short version, he was a very sick He was very sick and spent months at a time in the hospital as a kid, and both my parents and extended family gave him everything he wanted because he wasn't expected to live past nine years old. Medical science did save his life, but it took a couple of years for everyone to stop spoiling him. My father admitted it was just a habit, but once he realized the negative impact it had on me and the entitlement of Carl, things changed immediately. My mother is, to this day, the only holdout. Obviously, Carl hated that he was being told no for everything. Everyone expected him to just adjust over time, but he never did. He even told a therapist that he'd never cooperate because he was right and ever, and everyone else is wrong. Carl is extremely intelligent, but he's lazy and arrogant. He had to repeat senior year of high school because he refused to do any work. He refused to go to community community college because he believed that he knew more than the professors. He refused to get a job until he was 24 because he felt that all the jobs short of CEO were beneath him. Whenever my dad tried to do something about this attitude, like taking away my dad's credit card so Carl could no longer just buy takeout every day, my mother immediately undermined my dad. Uh, Lots of red flags, but that's a big one. Mom undermining dad. Carl doesn't cook or clean. He doesn't even pay rent. And over the last five years, he started viewing women as subservient to men. Okay. Carl. It's caused massive damage to his relationship with my dad. Carl still lives with my dad. And when I visit, we occasionally talk. Last time I visited, Carl complained that every girl he's taking out has ghosted him. I asked for information on the dates, where they went, what they talked about, etc. And he mentioned that they get weird as soon as he says his life plan is to is to inherit my dad's house and have his wife be a stay at home wife while he works. I told him that I told him that might be because he's 27 and making minimum wage. His plan is to never actually be an adult. My dad also told him that if he passed, I'd inherit the house because I know how to pay bills. I said I'd have to charge Carl rent if he stayed or I'd have to move in. Carl said that ruined his life plan. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, calamity candy strikes again. Knocked a drink over and managed to injure herself while sitting in a chair. 
and probably about 15 minutes ago, managed to somehow explode a Diet Coke can in the freezer. Dun, dun, dun. Another one bites the dust. You've sacrificed so many Diet Coke cans to the Diet Coke gods that that there's got to be something waiting for you. It'll be like the biggest, frostiest Diet Coke can ever. You'll be rewarded greatly. It's a gift. It's a gift. I love you. Prove it by what? <laughs> getting an ex get getting an explosion proof freezer. <clears throat> Carl said that ruined his life plan because he was supposed to get everything. Since I'm getting married and my husband should control me. I'll give you another red flag for that, sir. I snapped. I told him the reason he's getting ghosted is because he's pathetic. A walking red flag and no woman disrespects themselves enough to be with a loser like him. Nice work, OP. He started screaming that I'm an asshole. My dad understands that what I said is true, but that I should have it but that I should have been less blunt. My mother keeps calling to demand. I apologize for insulting Carl. I do want him to change and grow. So I feel I was wrong in calling him a loser and pathetic. I stand by the red flag part firmly. Am I the ask not edit some info? I didn't think to include. My parents are separated. Mom lives 150 miles away with her sisters. I live with bipolar disorder and my father and I have tried getting Carl to just get evaluated or speak to a doctor, but he says he's not defective like I am. The only reason my dad hasn't given Carl the boot is because he did get a job when dad threatened to kick him out if he didn't. My dad even set up an account for Carl for his savings, the goal being that he saves up enough to get an apartment and have a cushion, and dad has access to it. He will only start charging rent if Carl blows his savings on a non-emergency. So the question here is, am I the astronaut for telling my brother he's single because he's pathetic and a walking red flag? Hell no, uh, because it's true. And pain creates change. He has to change at some point. What what is going to create enough pain in his life to not be a where's my button there? Wait, no. Nope. What in his life is going to cause enough pain for him to not be a piece of shit, Brozo? Also, I think it's fantastic that he that he. He only recently got a job because everything below the title of CEO was beneath him. This is a Delulu level of entitlement. And yes, everybody knows how it happened, right? Everybody knows how it happened. He's the medical miracle. The boy who lived. But there was a course correction after after they realized he was he was going to have a full life ahead of him for everyone but mom and mom lives 150 miles away, but still managed to call OP up and be like, you've insulted Carl, Carl. Mm. Some something is going to is going to happen in this guy's life to cause him enough pain to eventually Someday change, or he's going to live the most lonely, miserable excuse for a life that anyone could. And that is going to be his, his penance for this. That is going to be his, his punishment for, for being who he is. He's going to, he's going to have a hard enough life because of who he is. He may not realize it, but he's going to be lonely as hell. You saying what you said, in my opinion, was like, Throwing him a, a freaking life preserver. It is is trying to save him from having a miserable life. I think this is the right thing to do for him. You created some pain for him. I, of course, he just, you know, you're the asshole for that. According to him, none of it, none of the things that you said are true, but he's going to keep running into this. And eventually one of those women that he's trying to date, he's going to say the wrong thing to, and they're going to unload on him too. He's going to have to hear it from enough people that he respects, which is the problem. He doesn't respect anyone else. So hey, maybe mommy telling him is the only thing that will ever sink through, but he doesn't respect anybody enough to, to value their opinion. 
So it's going to ha- it's going to take frequency. It's going to take a lot of times of this happening and him being told that he's a piece of shit to finally be like, oh, wait, I might be I might be a piece of shit. Or he's just going to live a very miserable life. But no, you are you are NTA for this OP mom for continuing to coddle him. <sighs> oh, he's, he's 27 now. Carl's 27. Mom for not <laughs> realizing that that her approach needed to change because he wasn't going to live just nine years. He's going to be a grown ass man now at 27 years old, still acting like an entitled, spoiled little shit of a child. She's going to have to come around to or she doesn't. And she just leaves this planet with him being this way. And then it's even more painful for him. So this is this is partially her fault, too, for sticking to her guns and continuing to coddle him. But he's going to have to encounter enough pain to prompt that change. Dad is still coddling him too. Tina, you're right. And, and not not to the degree that mom is, but he still is to a point. And that's not helping him. It, this is the morphine approach, right? They're They're solving their own short term pain by not forcing the painful change that needs to come They're They are serving themselves here. They're not serving his long term happiness. And as a parent, that's a fail. They don't see that yet because they're focused on the short term pain. Car- Carly Potter and the order of the mommy, Brittany. There you go. <laughs> uh, Carl must not return to the workforce. He's not safe here. That boy cried, cried mommy, United Snorts. He sure did. Hey, Belinda Small, Michelle Heather, uh, Say- Sayira. Shamika Fraser Offy, Carrie Curtis. Thank you guys so much. Uh, also, we got some new members of the fam here, courtesy of Angel. We've got lovely rainy day. Jen Collins, KTH 93, Vaughn and Nina. Welcome to the gosh heckin' fam to all of you. And thank you, Angel, for those. Queen Greenwich, Hawks Kirsten with the uh with the auto renewal renewal. <laughs> My my mouth just twisted into like a pretzel while trying to say 87 words at the same time. And what came out was <laughs> Candy Thunder says, welcome to my life. Words are hard. Yes. The storm. The storm is real quick. Those uh, words are hard emotes there. Uh, Hawks Kirsten. Glad to have you in the Gosh Eckett fam. Olivia Marie fly on the wall. Uh, Sahira. Heck yes. Welcome to the Gosh Eckett fam. San Juiz Zapata. Amber Dawn. Sent that uh, that gift. It's up to Ball Dancer. Heck yes! Welcome to the Gosh I Can Fam to you as well. Glad to have you all here. Jenny, uh, Jenny Lee, Mad Hatter, Belinda Small, Michelle, Sayura. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Greatly appreciate it. That uh, woo, woo, woo. yep that that was tough. My mouth don't work sometimes. All right. Um, I think we achieved we achieved our our paper grain. We got to get some confetti rocking up in here. Let me give some thanks for this and we'll go ahead and get some confetti rocking. Chef Tila in the number one spot here. Heck yeah. Tanya Pimbleton, TLS Journey, Animal 792, Lisey Lex, Cole Barber, Adventures with Pam and Haraksin, a lovely rainy day, Erica Eternal, Dylan Sprague, Miss Pamela L, Queen Chewy, Jilly 55, Rebecca Bain, and Lacey Burnett. Thank you all for that. Greatly appreciate it. Caden Thunder, would you mind popping some confetti for us real quick, please? I know Tony Sparks bailing on us he's got to go we've got his uh we've got his event stuff he's got to be rocking here thank you guys so much greatly appreciate all that and we're at 91 percent of the likes goal we got darn close there just don't point it at the camera or straight at my face don't don't point it straight at my face or do hey there we go well there's like a very fine confetti dust kind of floating (laughs) i think i got the black lung pop There we go. We can get there with the likes, V-Baby says. Oh, 92% already. We're rocking. We're rocking through it. We're rocking through it. Uh, all right, we're going to start outroing here. Let me get some outro notes going for you. We are going to do the VIP live here shortly. We'll flip over. It's just going to be Candy Thunder and I today because um, Tony Spark has some stuff for his event this weekend that he's got to jump on. The next live stream will be a multi-stream, which will include uh, at least YouTube. Eventually, it'll include the new Facebook page as well. Um, and of course, we'll be back here on TikTok next week at 3 p.m. Central, next Wednesday, April 10th. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and check it out if you have not already. There's a lot more content there, including the latest Dusty Thunder podcast episodes with special guests. We have compilations that post there as well. Thundermark, Thundermark, 
Words are hard. Thunder and Spark, Piano Man is up there, and we have YouTube exclusive content there too. VIP Live will be in about 10 to 15 minutes. We will do the Wheel of Thunder spin during that time as well. If this is your first time here, Wheel of Thunder is uh, is a wheel where we put the top 10 gifters, two new members of the storm and two existing members of the storm on there, and we spend for a few gifts during uh, during the VIP Live. So we'll jump into that. 94%, 97%, we are close. We are very, 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 very close. Jim Collins, excited to see your first VIP stream? Heck yeah. Uh, Tashi, how can you be a part of the VIP Live? So if you're a member of the storm, TikTok should send you a notification when we go live, but it probably won't because that's how it works. Um, So 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes after the public stream ends, if you come back to our page, you should see that we're live then. Hey, Red is the new black just found Tony Spark and followed. Hey, you guys got there. Heck yeah. You hit that like skull. Look at you. What? Look at you. Look at you. Thank you guys so much. Shamika, that dude was more like Dudley Dursley. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he was, uh, yeah. He's the boy who lived, but the Dudley version. <laughs> Tony Spark says, hopefully Candy Thunder is gentle with the wheel. She will. We'll take good care of you, Will. Alejandra, thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Uh, rank number four and two. Awesome, Kayla. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Greatly, greatly. <laughs> Heather, th- thank you guys for, uh, for, for all of you tippy tappers who got us to the point where we hit that like score for today. You're awesome. Greatly appreciated. And uh, everybody who, who has supported us with gifting, sharing, interacting, sharing is a big, big deal, guys. Again, we're, we're so close to 800K followers on TikTok. We're going to hit it this week. I'm manifesting that. And we have something cool to share when we do hit that. Smoots, hey, good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. The wheel lord has spoken. I'm not allowed to touch. I know. <laughs> 36. Bless you, I have 37. 40. Quite a bit more expensive this year. Baby Girl X, thanks for the share. They're greatly appreciated. Sharon S, Heather, Peggy, Dijard. Welcome to the God Checkin' Fam. Wonder Woman, welcome to the God Checkin' Fam. Nolan's Girl. Rebecca Bain in the God Checkin' Fam. It's Kit in the God Checkin' Fam. Heck yeah. Gabriel, Peggy Wheelie, Dijard, Mama Jen. Time Waster, welcome to the God Checkin' Fam. Kelly Ann, Peggy, Squishy, Sunarienko, Vanessa Riviera. Rivera. Uh, Peggy again there, Ginny Lee, Mad Hatter. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it. Nolan's girl with the hand arts, Michelle Heather with the here we go. Brittany with the heart meets. Thank you so much. Ryan Lee Manzel. Welcome to the Gosh I Can Fam. Glad to have you here. Put a timer on the freezer door, Tony Spark. That's a good idea. Awesome. United Stars, heck yeah. Heck yeah. You guys did it. You're at 103% now. You're still pushing through. Uh, Morocco, we're actually from Missouri. From Southwest Missouri. When are we going to get more merch? Uh, interesting. You should ask. We may have some news on an exciting merch adventure soon. Not ready to talk about it yet, but soon. Also, if you go to dusty-thunder.com, um, some new designs have been added in the swag store that go with the new emotes. We now have Bizzo. We have Delulu. Uh, we have a new Words Are Hard design up there as well, I believe. There's lots of cool stuff. You should go check it out. Definitely go check it out. What the Grey Rock is cooking? We did. We had a we had a great weekend. It was fun. If you guys came in having a shitty day, I hope hope you feel better now. I hope we were able to distract you and put a smile on your face for a little while. Um, even just hearing about other people's shitty situations. Sometimes it's cathartic. Science Mama, welcome to the Gosh Eckett Fam. Sudrienko, Morocco, Morocco Video, Nolan's Girl, Tammy Lee, and Hot Oxman. The Baby Girl Rex, Miss Lily Nail Monster, KTH93. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it. All right, we're going to go ahead and pivot over to VIP. We'll take a short little break to get set up there, and we'll see you in about 10 to 15 minutes if you remember the VIP. Otherwise, thank you for the note. Nita, appreciate it. Lady Van Landingham, nice distraction as you've been sick there. Man, the sickness just sucks. Well, the Grey Rock, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, thanks so much, guys. We'll see you here soon. 